Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Strange Road. I'm your host, Mikey. As always, the bro host, Bub. What's up? And tonight we have Stoner and Disboro in master control, making everything look and sound awesome. Bub, Full how crew. you doing? Full crew. I'm great. So you, st- you stoked for this one? I'm always stoked for this one. Yeah, me too. Dude, we had a great time at Serpent Mound last weekend. Had some uh, folks. Had some great experiences. Yep. Some folks came out to hang out. We did our live podcast with Jeffrey Wilson, the Serpent Mountain Crop Circle, which will be out. We're not really sure exactly when just yet, yeah. but keep a look out, uh, look out for that. We did some recordings some, of some awesome presentations, uh, hung out with Cameron and Liz, Born Not to Run, yeah. came out and yeah. hung out. Saw some saw some people that actually listened to the show yep. and gave us some feedback and yeah, had some Mike interaction. Downer. and yeah. It was great. It was such it was a, a good time. Also, so. saw a rare thing that I thought you and Stoner were just off on one. I was like, lightning bugs aren't different anywhere. Oh, dude. We saw synchronous right? lightning bugs yes. down there. In the rain. Where they actually... Something about the rain when they, do those like, things come out. It, it's like a light show. Like, it is a full-on light show. It's really cool. And then I see this post on Instagram. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, in Peoples, Ohio... There's these types of lightning yeah, bugs, and I'm like, get that out today. of here. Yes. Uh, so I was like, these are different. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> it was cool. It was cool. Hey, there's Emily. What's happening, Emily? Little corn puff and I uh, are watching. <laughs> nice. Justin Hi, Necro, what's happening? Uh, you know what? Let's hop into it. We Dive had, in. uh, uh, Again, thank you, Bev, Jeffrey, and Delcy for being awesome hosts. Uh, Friends of the Serpent Mountain Summer Solstice was a total smash success. It was a fun week. The weather held off for the most part. Uh, got a little rain, but it was awesome. Um, yeah, let's jump right in. We're going to intro our special guests in studio tonight. Dun, 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 dun. We got Justin and Jay from Cryptids of the Corn, everybody. <laughs> They're in town. Hey. Uh, hanging out. We were hanging out today. They have a new big uh, project, Lawn Chair Documentaries, that we're going to definitely get into. But you guys are in town for that. First of all, how the hell are you guys? We're good. Thank What's you happening? guys for having us in. Living the dream. Yes. I, we kind of... I kind of invited ourselves in. <laughs> I was like, hey, we're going to be in town on Thursday. Yeah. You down for an episode? Absolutely, dude. But like yeah. we said last time, you guys are always welcome. You guys oh, have yeah. been awesome, amazing in terms of, like, helping us out, giving us advice. Uh, you know, we stayed here hours after the first time we did this. Oh, and, gosh, and you guys we, got, we got home at, like, 3.30 <laughs> in the morning. I know. felt so bad. No, it was awesome. We totally like... should have just put you up at a hotel or was something. It was fairly. It got late. <laughs> we weren't planning on any of that. You know, it's just how it happens. Did we get pizza, too? Did yeah, we, yeah, we, we got two pizzas. We didn't order pizza until, <laughs> <didn't order> <laughs> like, like, midnight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's hilarious. Uh, but this is my favorite studio to be in. Uh, these guys have a really well stocked liquor cart and beer <laughs> refrigerator. Anybody that knows me knows me <laughs> knows of my problems <laughs> and how that helps. Like well, this stuff. Cheers, but, fellas. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah. This has been Just cheers one. Uh, it's been a fun day. Like yeah. we got to hang out. Uh, I don't know how much you guys are able to talk about. So this it's this first secret. documentary to- topic is op- is public. Okay. Uh, because yeah. it, you know it was a crowdfunded thing and stuff yeah. like that. So we're trying. You know these first couple are going to be pretty open. It's the giant catfish of North America. Okay. Uh, we're going to keep a lot of the stuff that was recorded secret because there's some pretty funny things that you helped us record and some stuff that was really funny yesterday we recorded. Yeah. They, they're gonna, you guys are going to love, uh, especially because I got beat up and Jay got beat up in different ways. Yeah, we both got Yeah, we did. We both got beat up. <laughs> Me think, and Stoner did not get beat up today. That's right. Yeah. Just you didn't up. get in the water. Yeah, we don't uh, We do not do that. No, wait. What did Stoner say? Uh, ankles only. <laughs> ankles oh, yeah. Only. He, got, he said, I'm an ankles only kind of guy. <laughs> when he got He's in the like, river. He's like, Stoner, water. come on. Get, get on ahead in there. Get in the river. He's like, I'm really an ankles only kind of guy. <laughs> it wasn't about it. <laughs> ankles <Yeah>. only. <laughs> no, but. He's a waiter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's lawn chair documentaries, and we got to thank our buddy Kurt at polyfurniture.com. Also, a chef. Chief- Chief, Chief Corn stock. stock. If anybody listens to our show, you know who hey. Chief Corn Stock is. Yep. He got us these chairs in the table. Uh, there's videos of these in the middle of the freaking river with us in them already and stuff like that. Nice. And he's in the middle of, like, there's pretty, all kinds of cool, like. They're heavy duty. Yeah. The problem like is, them. Kurt, is they're really heavy. Heavy, yeah. So Emphasis the next the documentary, there'll be some, some scenes that there aren't in. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, they're. It was hard to get them out to the middle of the Scioto. These will be for the more glamour shots. Yeah. yeah. What if we just attach Interview some wheels chairs. to it? That it's, way when you fold yeah, it up, just, you could just wheel it. Right. Well, when you what? go into a river. The problem is yeah. we went through a homeless camp today and then crawled out to the sure, middle of the river sure with these did, things. Sure did, didn't you? I'll bet. Yeah. Over on Greenlawn? Yeah. 
Yeah. And I always, I so we used to, when I was a biologist for the city, like down, it, we worked out of Columbus. Yeah. We go to Greenland all the time. There's the homeless camp there. We always just told them, hey, we're coming through. We're doing a fish survey, whatever. And everybody never had a problem with anybody down there. Yeah. We did the same thing today. We went over like, hey, we're filming over here. We're not, we don't want to mess with anybody. We're too close to your stuff. Just let us know. We'll back off. Everybody was like, nope, you're fine. Whatever. Yeah. Cool. It's just like, got to be cool. Yeah. As long as you just don't sneak up on them, just, you know, that's, that's, you know. Just don't sneak up on no, them. Don't people, sneak up on the homeless guys yeah, in the woods. Yeah. You can take anything away from too. this. They're a little yeah. jumpy sometimes. Well, I'll tell you this. I worked a lot. We're already getting to the homeless. But uh, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of them have mental illness that's untreated, and that's right. how they ended up in their situation. It's right. not their fault. So. Sure. A lot of those folks had homes. They had yeah. families. They had real— one rough, one rough week in your life can really yeah. can change. change a lot of yeah. things. Well, sure. COVID right. really I know one a lot more people on the streets. One person more you shouldn't sneak up on, though— is one person worse than is this guy right here? I will punch you. Don't I, sneak up on him. Jay tried to Duly sneak noted. up on me at the Hocking Hills Bigfoot Conference last year. Yeah, threw some hands. Why well, is a little drunk? Oh. He's got ninja reflexes. Like, and he's always in attack mode. Jay, <laughs> Jay, come up and he so, crawled up beside the car, tickled my elbow. Well, <laughs> but then he dodged. He put he put a cup up and tried to dodge. <laughs> I punched all the way through the cup. Shadow of the cup still punched him in the face. <laughs> the throw, throw. Throw. You got me right in the cry. You didn't punch you. Judo chopped me. <laughs> Gee, <laughs> right in the throat. But it was all like in no time. That's awesome. I was oh. staring at his back and then I had a throat or a chop in my throat. So the okay. whole cool point about lawn chair documentaries oh, is yeah. to show off the paranormal, supernatural, all this fun stuff we, we all like to talk about. But the the side of it that every person can go to, that's the point of lawn chairs, that yeah. you can take lawn chairs to these places. Right. So did I think, did you get to see a cool spot that you didn't know existed? Oh, yeah. It's easily today, accessible? I told you, this yeah. week, or next weekend, I'm going to take the girls down. Yeah. And get some inner tubes. Yeah. So I see, just got to figure out how to get back. Yeah. There's yeah. A it's a cool spot. Back, but there is a, there's another pull off about two yeah, miles down. Maybe I would, yeah. I'll, I'll figure Have your wife out. Park, park a car there and then park one up there. Have somebody pick you up. That's what we Yeah. There you go. <laughs> But no, so that's the point of lawn chair documentaries is to show that uh, we like to poke at our buddy Joel. Everybody here likes to poke at Joel. Love you, Joel. Joel's great. By the way, we do not poke at Joel. <laughs> you guys might poke at Joel. We I do poke, not at, poke Joel. at Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, big ginger. Big ginger. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, anyways, like, so Joel does amazing stuff with the documentaries he works on. But Joel's crazy. Like, he's running through the middle of the woods. He's oh, yeah. jumping off cliffs. We he's talked, doing all this. We talked about him. Yeah, I'm, I'll go jump in the portal. Like the I portal gotta, opens up, I'm going in. Yeah. Like, like, I have a bad knee. He's awesome. And I have a brother that has muscular dystrophy. Like, I, you know, there's all these people that want to go out and still experience the stuff. They just You can't go out to the middle of National Boone Forest. You can't oh, get out and, you know. We've driven through it. Yeah. Been, Daniel Boone National Forest. Yeah, been in the heart of that. Thing. Wow, it's so, squatchy there. Right, but you like the like there's people that can't go out and do that. So the whole point of this right. is to show there's still areas that everybody able bodied or not can still do and enjoy. Accessible, yeah. yeah. An experience, yeah. Any, any anything to add? Um, I, I mean, love it. I love the concept. Let yeah, me just say, it's really great. It's uh, nice just you know it, being able to include everyone that just. To something that they didn't know is right beneath their yeah. nose this whole time. Right. So that's just kind yeah, of that's the kind fun of been part our podcast journey too. Yeah. It's like we found stuff like, I mean, everybody knows that we're going to do this one, but the Willard UFO yeah. is in Ohio. Like this crazy UFO encounter that happened in Ohio, and there's going to be a lot of exclusive footage with that one that we have permissions for. Oh, wow. cool! Like uh, somebody had a VHS or something like that. Back can't talk today. about that. Wow. But maybe All some right. really cool interviews and stuff like that. But you know. And it's through the podcast. Literally, a guy that we know, because uh, he'll probably be in that documentary. I imagine. Yeah, I don't want to say it unless you want to. I don't, I don't say, say his name. Yet. Okay, okay. Uh, but no, so he listens to podcasts and he's like, "Yeah, I know the guy that works. I know all the guys that worked those years at the dump because the UFO was landing and taking off out of the dump. Oh, right next to his house. He's like, I know all those guys. You want me to see where I can hook you up with with them? And he did. That's amazing. And yeah, yeah so Small we world. got some. Yeah, and, you guys have interviewed those folks already. We're, no, that's our next one. Okay. Getting ready to. You got uh, lined up, though. Yeah. That's amazing. Good job. And then I think we can spoil one more. We'll save some of the other ones. Okay. Yeah, don't give away too much. Uh, but hyenas. That's one of our more popular episodes in the last recent months. They're strange. The hyenas of North America. There's hyenas oh, right. in North America? Yeah. Why? Well, why? Why? <laughs> 
Well, if you listen to episode, <laughs> you don't know the episode. Why? Season three, episode why, Wayne? 34. 30, 34, I think. 34. <laughs> 34 what? I don't know. Episode 34, season oh, okay. three. Something yeah. like that. that I have no idea. Your... Emily, look it up. It's 40 so, well, Okay, back to that. Why? Why are there? Why Wait, not? hold on a second. Wait, I mean, Where'd they come I, from? Was just exotic, they, was, they, they, don't li- they don't listen to our show. Exotic pets? I, dude, I'm just picking. A lot of shows. Podcasters don't get to listen to podcasts. I, it's, I don't listen to my, I listen to my own <laughs> podcast the other we day. We used I to listen to. to a lot of podcasts. We don't That's listen what, to as many now. No. Yeah, I hardly listen to any. No, so hyenas in North America are a really cool thing. Uh, they're seen all the time. Uh, we actually had a listener reach out to us with an email. Actually, we've got some really cool episodes that where listeners will reach out and they just have like a little glimpse of an encounter yeah. okay. of something biological. Like, I know it was a hyena is what I saw. Here's the intersection I seen it on. Here's the city, the state. And then it's blown up. Like, we've done the research and it blows up. And there were hundreds of people seen hyenas. And okay. then, well, all, I mean, the, the great, the grasslands. Where did the was population all, of them come from? It was like a savanna. So, so there were a lot of African type. Like there were weird hyenas rhinos. are a little specialer than that. Yeah. But they're not indigenous to the North Americas, are they? So probably back. Like I said, guys are being jays right now. <clears throat> jay. in the end. Oh, you ruined it. But no, it's everybody loves Jay because he does that. <laughs> uh, no, so hyenas are. So we have two, we have spotted and striped hyenas left today. Yeah. There's a Europe. There's also uh, brown hyenas. Uh, there's some arguments about that. There was a European brown hyena just went extinct recently, like last 500 years. Uh, so that was in all Europe. Hmm. Uh, they were in England, but they killed everything off in England a long time ago. Good job. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, they didn't want anything that had teeth. They just got rid of. Right. Uh, <laughs> so in North America, relatively recently talking geologically, there were hyenas, a real close cousin to the brown hyena. They were pretty – they were. They look kind of like striped hyenas, but they're you know a little bulkier. They just went extinct, uh, once again, relatively recently. Hyenas, we get this whole image of them being dumb predators, being goofy, being loud. Uh, as you know, the general populace gets this because you see Lion King and they're kind right. of the, the goofy the monsters. Guys. Yeah. Uh, no, they're highly smart. And when they're not in those mega packs, they are extremely secretive. They also go up to, what was it, like 14,000 feet up in elevation. Uh, they can handle severe cold. Like mm-hmm. hyenas are only limited by other, other predators in the area. And hyenas aren't small. Like you see them next to lions on that geo. And you don't realize big. how big a lion mm-hmm. is. No, hyenas So when you are see big. this hyena next to a lion, you're like, oh, the hyenas are small. No, yeah. no. No, you know, they get 300 pounds. Their right. bite yeah. force is extreme. Oh, Worse yeah. than anything in Africa. Yeah. So right then we have a population of the similar hyenas that just went extinct in North America. Or did they? The habitat really didn't change. They survived the megafauna extinction. They mm. survived well past it. So yeah. they're not one of these fauna that disappeared with that extinction event. Okay. So what's weird is not many of the fauna that survived that— did go extinct until uh, white settlers got here, mm. uh, like bison and stuff like that. You know, were pushed to the brink of extinction. American alligators were pushed to the brink <clears> of <throat> extinction. Sure. So why did they go extinct? So that's one of those big questions. One of the things we kind of talked about in the episode was maybe they didn't. Right. They went the relic populations very hidden. They learned that they're not the boss predator, and they just have to pull back. And brown <clears> hyenas <throat> specifically will go into single animal groups. Like they'll just be by themselves. Uh, they'll meet to mate and stuff like that, but that's it. You don't see like striped hyenas, spotted hyenas with these big, these big uh, units together. Uh, the other thing is, now I have to remember his name. Whose name? Teddy's hyena. Oh, uh, was it Jack? Mm, I don't sound Jimmy? right. I don't definitely don't sound right. Uh, you're talking about President Teddy Roosevelt. So Teddy Roosevelt, hyenas. Of course, Teddy Roosevelt. Old Teddy. Well, hyenas a lot. were a super popular pet. In Teddy Roosevelt's day. Okay. They brought him over his cubs. They released. Yeah. Yeah. There was hundreds, if not thousands, of hyena cubs brought over as pets. Wow. Okay. So Teddy would wrestle with his on the front lawn of the White House. Wow. Uh, He would bring it to congressional meetings and all this stuff. He had a hyena on a chain. uh, And he ended, like, he spent his elder years in the D.C. Zoo. Uh, He died of old age, natural causes. He was Jimmy or something. Like, he had the goofy name. That's the hyena. Te- Teddy Hedges. Roosevelt's the best president we ever had because he would left the campaign trail to go hunt the Snallygaster. Oh, the Snallygaster. Right. With his pet hyena. That's a book. That's a movie. That's a that movie is. Somewhere. That really is. Did Mikey and Bob just... It's oh, probably already That made. would be a good movie. Bill. Thank you, Emily. It was Bill. Thank you, Emily. There we go. Ah. Emily with this. Bill the hyena. <laughs> but there's like... He had a hyena. He oh. took the... Episode 26, season three. Ah, oh, I was... I was I Emily's got that on. on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Between him and Salvador Dali having an anteater as a pet, walking oh it around gosh. Paris. Oh, my giant, giant South American anteater, yep. yeah. And he really loved that thing. But hyenas He's were a popular cool. pet for, like, really cool. four decades. Yeah. Like, people would, like, they were coming over by the ships. They were catching cubs out in the wild and, you know, yeah. bringing them over. Because uh, hyenas are kind of weird. They do have extreme social bonds. So, like we did with dogs, uh, they are a candidate for domestication because they have a very strong pack structure. Right. Uh, the problem with hyenas is they get so much bigger and they have so much bite force. The room for error mm, is, is a little less. Very small. Yeah. yeah. But Teddy Roosevelt, I mean, he's the president. That definitely would have had one. In enough room and space. Yeah. I mean, but other people, like I said, hundreds, if not thousands, were brought into the U.S. every decade for about four decades for pets. There you go. And they just were releasing them. That's insane. But once hyenas break off from their pack, <clears throat> they biologically, look, we have this documented, they become very, very, very secretive. They don't want to be seen because like they panther. don't feel confident. Like a black panther. Yeah. Or something. You know, when you see them in Africa in these big packs and stuff like that, and they're harassing lions and they're, you know, chasing buffalo, whatever, it's because they're, there's, you know, there's Strength 50 of numbers. them. numbers. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's when there's, they're a whole <laughs> different animal when they're solitary. So we kind of came to the conclusion that it's a mix of that to where it could be both a relic population of the North American brown hyena or even and or these populations that were being released at the time of Teddy Roosevelt. Hmm. Which wasn't that long ago in all reality. Right, no, but they're, no, not at all. So there's animals like that, though, that we think of African f- fauna or desert animals. They can survive very cold climates. Day- right. or, uh, Detroit, Michigan right now is having a problem with emus. Really? Because uh, they got loose. Four emus got loose. Now there's a pack of like 26 of them. Oh <laughs> my God. Good. And they, I love emus. Good. Good. <laughs> yeah. Two green bears got loose. Yeah. Good. Wow. Yes. I want some wildlife again. Yeah. They can't catch them. Good. They keep like, nobody believes like the, like the DNR won't admit they're there. The wildlife officer won't admit they're there. There's one lady was filming like six of them running through a field. Oh my God. Like she's like, I'm in Detroit, Michigan, exit, blah, blah, blah. And there's six emus just running. And, like it's just funny that nobody wants to admit they're there because they can't catch them. They're well, freaking dinosaurs. Um, they're doesn't fast. Texas have more captive tigers than the entire world? Than wild, has population. wild population. I know the U.S. has more captive tigers than the world. I don't know. If I think Texas. Just, I, think I just could believe Texas it. Alone just, to, but then on top of that is <clears throat> yeah, Oklahoma just also alone. has yeah. no laws on exact right. Yeah. Is that where like Joe exactly? Florida. Is from? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, Oklahoma. he's Oklahoma. Is yeah. he not? Right. He's, He's Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Oklahoma, but yeah. Oklahoma's yeah. similar, and Florida. I think I saw a hyena there in Indian Lake. They say they were moving down from Ada along. Really, <laughs> along yeah. Stoner's dad? Come Stoner on, Stoner dad. Look no, not really. Stoner. <laughs> down from Ada, Ohio. Now we did have a zoo in Ada, Ohio. Did you see the uh, recent article though? It was like uh, maybe it was on Twitter that in uh, Franklin County they spotted a black bear, like the Three Creeks Metro Park area. Three Creeks. I was telling you guys about that. It was today. laying in like somebody's Three driveway Creeks, on their the ring big, camera. The big walnut. Oh, okay. Size black bear. They're black bear. Black bear north of us, south of us, and supposed to be here. Oh no, I know. It's, it's just it's one of those things we don't hear about. Right. You know right. what? The that, DNR acts like they don't exist in some areas. Right. Same with mountain lions. Like we had. So <clears> here, I think we talked about it last time we were in here. That there was a mountain lion, a trackway that was like five miles long along the Scioto Bank, all the way into Columbus. Oh really? Yeah, like five miles worth. Wow. Prowling it. And everybody said they were fake. Uh, no. Yeah. No, well, we talked about the Black Panthers and <clears throat> truckers seeing them around. Oh, yeah. Urbana oh, and yeah. Stuff. Oh, but, yeah. So yeah. I'll tell that little story. Sorry, I'm talking a lot already. Oh, but, you're good. Uh, when me and Emily were in the dorms at, in college, there was a black bear trying to break into our dorms. It was trying to pull at the, like pull the door open. Where'd you go to Hawking College? Yeah. Yeah. And then some lady seen it get in the dumpster and thought it was a dog. Oh, God. And she's out there going, oh. Get, you know, trying oh, to whack no. it, get, get, get. Then finally she gets like, it's only like an 80 pound bear. You know, it's not, you know, it's not a 200 pound black bear. It's like a, you know, a two year old. Finally she realizes it's not a dog and then takes off running. Oh my God. I would have wow. ran too. It's a bad day. I, yeah. yeah. You just got to punch it. It's a black bear. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Jay, get out there. Just punch bears. You were scared <laughs> of the crawfish today. You're throwing crawfish at my chest. <laughs> But I was getting pinched by him. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to. Oh man! How big? How big were they? There was one really big one in there. And they were pretty decent Good size. size. Yeah, did like, you just see Jay show like that? They were like big. That's they a friggin' big. lobster. Hey, <laughs> six inches. They were this. They were big. People say I can't measure. Crawfish are good. It's a joke. It's, it was a joke. Delicious. I got the joke. Okay. Yeah, crawfish are good. Bald people just can't measure. Bro- well. Broiled crawfish. Shoot. <laughs> 
Oh, but yeah, that's the. I just don't want them throwing it in my face. That's we just did another my one. Issue. Should we tell them about the shoe bills? What about them? Oh, I love shoe bills. That's that's, that's the bird that I was trying to remember. The shoe bill stork. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah those those weird dinosaur. Creepy looking, looking, looking yeah, dinosaur. They make their thing. beaks clack like a machine gun. Yeah. Like they have some weird ticks. They're highly endangered in Africa. I believe it. Uh, they have two keystone species they were only found with in Africa. They live in like the Congo, right? I, we just did it. it. No, there's only two. There's only two swamps that are even found in Africa anymore. Okay, they may have been native to the Congo, but I don't think they're actually in in the Congo anymore. Well, everything is in the Congo, so probably I mean, there could be. They could be in there. Nobody know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're found with fantail reeds and lungfish. So that means the reason that is because they breed in the fantail reeds. They use them to make their nest, and lungfish is their favorite prey uh, in Africa. So they're only pretty much found in places that have both of those species. Already occurring. Uh, they're really big. Have you ever seen they're videos huge. of them? They clack. They're highly sociable. Mm. They make for life. They do all this stuff. They mm. take the, both parents put a lot of time investment in raising chicks. They put their nest out of the way, and they're super secretive as far as large birds go. So we had a lady. Jen, I don't know if you're watching this, but uh, she reached out to us and just shared a story she had. And it was, a, it was like a Tuesday morning. Literally, we're getting ready to record, like really early. And she's like, I just had this encounter. And she's like, I'm pretty sure it was a shoe bill. And it was in Florida. The, no, the Sandal Islands. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, that it, we get to Florida. Right, that's after. <clears throat> and I'm like, okay, yeah. She's like, we just look into it, see what you find and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, sure. I start looking into it. I get in a rabbit hole and I write a whole script and everything that morning before Jay gets there. <laughs> nice. Because it's not just her. Shoe bills, everybody ain't seen one. They, Emily, you're funny. My wife's in the chat. Everybody's screwing with me. Are they better uh, parents than Bofin? No. Nothing's a better Bofin. parent than a Bofin. That's a pretty deep cut like, uh, reference. What are they saying now? She Now she got me all thrown around. Florida shoe bills. Uh, so anyone's ever seen a shoe bill, they're very distinct. Yeah, you're They don't look like other that. birds. No. They Unlike like sandhill cranes and like all those birds with these size big Size alone and the beak size. They, Five to five and a half foot for the right. big males. Uh, females are, you know, more up four heads foot. heads are just enormous. Yeah. They look like Dude. clogs. They look like yeah. they have wooden clogs for faces. Look like right. a Skeksy. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they do. Like what? From the oh, dark crystal. Dark oh, okay. Okay. Big nerd you reference. Don't know. I wouldn't have some nerd, nerd reference. I know dark crystal. It's been a while. It's but, been a while. So she's seen them, and then we get, like, they've been seen all over the U.S. And then I start looking. Do you know there's only four of them in the U.S.? In a zoo somewhere? In zoos. There's three okay. in Florida and one in Texas. Uh, that's it. They are so incredibly rare. And then we get looking, looking, looking more. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sightings all the way from uh, Nova Scotia. Hmm. Tons and tons and tons in Florida, North, South Carolina. People like, I know like I know what I saw. It was a shoe bill. It's obvious. You know, it's this big, you know. And they'll come up to people a little bit. Like they've been habituated. Hmm. Like they're looking for food like other birds is what most people seen. And then they'll back off, and then they'll yeah. disappear. We got looking and looking. So the illegal – and uh, we had a member reach out to us about this. But the, the third largest illegal trade in the world is animals. Yeah. is exotic animals. The shoebill stork is the rarest bird for zoos to have in the world. Wow. Uh, to a zoo, they're worth right around 30 grand. Uh, to private collectors – they're worth upwards of three hundred thousand dollars. Say break triple. They're the most. They're the most expensive bird alive on the black market. Wow. Uh, their number one problem in Africa right now People is that there's poaching. hundreds of them harvested a year for the pet trade. Oh my God. Most so illegal there probably animals. Are people seeing them in Florida? So, one more fact for you: most illegal animals that come into the United States come in through Florida because the yep, customs yep, are the easiest. Yep. So if you have this six foot bird. Out of the wilds of Africa, <laughs> yeah. the first time it gets, it gets to see air is in, is in Florida. Everglades. You open the door, and it just takes off. They're gone. Because they can't fly. They're very poor flyers. Yeah. Uh, they can't fly from Africa to here. They're not one of those birds that can make it all the can way over. Can they fly? Yeah. Just, a little bit? Yeah. Like, like a cormorant so or whatever. They're so big and heavy. Their heads they can, are so They can move big. around to fly, but they're not going to go 100 miles. You know, They're going to take breaks every couple miles. Yeah, they'd need a good gust of wind yeah. or something. And it's so, a lot. They're not like a frigate where they just stay up in the air right, for forever. You know, a year or something. Right, yeah. <laughs> so there, there's that Ridiculous. point that they're getting loose in Florida all the time. Mm. The other thing is these ones act like they've been fed before. Well, they've, if they've been a pet, 
they for would know several months. Sure. Yeah, you know, they know people. Okay, I'm really hungry. I'm not where I'm supposed to be, and this I've been fed by people before. Uh, I mean, it makes sense because isn't like 97 percent of all the mammals and birds gone in the Everglades because of exotics? Yeah, pythons. Yeah. Oh yeah. And oh. all the well, there's all it's it's the fish, it's the amphibians, yeah. the it, you know all the not natives, right. Because it's one of besides Puerto Rico, it's U.S.'s only. They have a thing. kill on site. There's like a million pythons in the. In They're never. Yeah. You never. It's never ever been done where a human has gotten rid of an invasive species. Oh. Never. I don't know always, why we act like it's going to do anything. Yeah, they always it's never try happened. To bring in another species. We've used kill. rotenone, which kills everything with the central nerve system. Try to get rid of like invasive trouts out west, and they come back. Hmm. That's crazy. Uh, hmm. Just drop a bomb on him. Wow. So what is Justin they says? Regular birds. They ride on crocodiles' backs. Yeah, so we we attached that in because we did oceanic crocodiles the week before, and oh shoebills eat crocodiles. They eat small crocodiles, but they like to eat crocodiles. I don't doubt it, dude. Those things look like murderers. Uh, so what was their wingspan? Do they eat regular bird seed? I doubt they're you going to eat regular bird seed. a great Q and A episode. That is a great Sorry. question. I'm yeah, not used to seeing big. Like it's just yeah, easy. Any question? No, eat regular bird, bird seed. No, I believe. Good question. What do you think? <laughs> Their wingspan is the like around Stoner's eight dad, foot. big bird guy, photographs okay. birds and Ooh. Uh, go like, uh, go from, to the coast from they, Indian Lake. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. So here's one for you, Stoner's dad. Does, what's his real name? Stoner's Neil. dad. Here's one for you, Neil. When I was in college. We were doing. We had to go get up early, do bird work. Like I have to identify birds by the calls. Oh, cool. We go to Lake Logan, which is south uh, east Ohio. Mm-hmm. We get there and there's hundreds of cars parked everywhere. Like it's five in the morning, nobody's ever there. We're we're the we have to be there because we have to do this class. And what had happened is a neo neo tropical cormorant. Which do you guys know what a cormorant is? I know the name. I don't Sounds remember. So what bird you ever seen like. these little black birds that kind of look like pelicans? They have the yellow. <laughs> Chin patch, but they're like that big. Yeah. So that's a cormorant. Okay. So there's neotropical cormorants, which just have like extra yellow around the eye. But it was like 3,800 miles out of its range. So this was the first, like all these Ohio birders, this is the only chance in their whole life they were ever going to get a picture of this thing. And there was hundreds of them. Wow. Yeah, it went to college in Athens. So yeah, you know right where Lake Logan is. Yeah, he was there for like two or three days, then they ended up catching him and taking him home because he wouldn't have been fine when the winter came along. Our yeah. cormorants are a little more used to it. You know, ones from South America aren't. Yeah. Yeah. But we've Can't had birds are weird because they'll pop up way out of range. Mm. Uh what was it? I think it was Andy Arugula. Yeah, Andy Arugula. I love mispronouncing everybody's names. I do it on <laughs> purpose on at some point. <laughs> but no, they just had a uh, stellar <clears throat> seagull pop up like s- two thousand miles out of range. Now that would be awesome to see. Like in his hometown. Stellar sea eagle. So it's one of the biggest raptors on the planet. There's the ones that take out planes. What? Holy cow. Uh, because they're super, they're highly territorial. So, you know, there's bald eagles, golden eagles. Stellars are these massive uh, northern hemisphere eagles. Uh, they're mostly open ocean faring. They can fly thousands, thousands of miles without landing. Wow. And they don't like biplanes. They'll actually get on top of them and just start ripping Jeez. giant holes in the wings, pulling out rivets and stuff like that. What? There's a. I showed. We talked about. We played that video. Are these like bit. the eagles from Lord of the Rings? Not that quite that big. Jeez, <laughs> they, I've, <laughs> I've not seen a stellar eagle in person. I've seen a golden eagle in person. Yeah. And it looked. I thought it was a man in a costume. <laughs> the first time I ever seen one, I thought it was like a little man in a costume. <laughs> Because the way it was moving on the ground, it like it yeah. looked like a guy shuffling, and we're like, what, what is he I doing? Creepy. I didn't get to see it this past weekend. I didn't see the Peruvian eagle. The the falconer at oh, yeah. Friends of Serpent Mount event Serpent had Mount a bunch event. of different birds out there, and he had, had a Peruvian a... eagle. Oh, sweet. Dude, it and it was cool. a really cool-looking bird from the images I saw. I what landed on it. your arm? I don't remember. It was a some kind a of a hawk. Black hawk, black raptor, some bird. But it was a bird. big hawk. Yeah. It's probably something. about... This tall, something like they carry yeah. around in Mongolia. And we were, you know, Bub sent the, it back, putting the gloves on to the falconer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the, the guy, only one that sent it back to him. The oh, guy, that's awesome. we got photo. I need to, I need to post some of the that guy stuff. that he I have had, a slow motion video of Bub. Yeah, like that the guy that he out. had uh, sending the bird the whole day. So he had a helper, right? So he pulled some out of the crowd. He stood there the whole day, and the, the falconer would bring the bird back to him. You know, wrap the lead around his finger. And they say, you know, wait until I get the next person ready. And then when he had the next person with the glove on down the hill and put some food on there, then he would say, okay, you ready? And he'd say, let it go, let it fly. And he would give it the signal, and that guy would let it go. 
So at the end of the day, since he had let this bird go over and over and, you know, holding it, he's like, now you come down here. So that guy who had been holding the bird all day goes to the bottom of the hill and the guy puts some food like right on top of his head. He's like, you ready? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, let it go. And that bird comes down, just snaps it. Right that now. is awesome. It was, it was very really cool. cool. And it was, yeah. you know, it's And it's, it's funny because Necro actually made an image leading up to the Friends of the Serpent Mound uh, premiere that we did. And because we talked about falconry going to be out there. And Necro had me uh, with the bird landed on me, and then Jeff and Delcy as the uh, these little two two little owls up in the corner. Oh God! Because we talked about like trimming uh, around Serpent Mound, and Bub talked about a stick trimmer. He oh just yeah, got. I had a stick trimmer in that. So image. it's funny because I was like, dude, you're gonna you're. you're Mike, he's like, get out! There. I was like, get out get there, out dude! Bub. Come on, go get the bird! And I'm like, ah, he said, like, go for it! And I'm like, fine, I'll go out there. Yeah. And then I, ended I knew being you'd the be last entertaining. Yeah. Out there. Oh yeah. <laughs> By the way. Jeff goes, hey, did you see that? That last one where the bird flew out? He's like, I videoed the whole thing, and I went, yeah, I'm in it. Yeah, (laughs) that's me holding the bird. No, you haven't sent that yet. That's too funny. Necro, we love the image, by the way. Necro's awesome. (laughs) You guys pay him? (laughs) No. No, Necro, you should come over to the Crypt of the Corn. (laughs) See? He says in his bio, hit him up. You, you, uh... The Eagles you being know, trained to take down drones. I've seen that. Yeah, I've that's seen awesome. that. It almost happened today. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> no, that was funny. That at, he it was like a little red shank talk or something like that. It was like sizing up the drone and then decided it wasn't worth it. Yeah, isn't that interesting though? So you're using this modern technology, and then you're going to use birds and train them to attack these drones. Old and, school, always it, wins. It's pretty natural for them because they hate other birds. They hate yeah. other predators. Like yeah. uh, we were at an eagle release in, in Illinois. Uh, and they released they rehabilitated this bald eagle. Ospreys and eagles hate each other. Yeah. Here's the thing is eagles hunt ospreys. solitary mostly. Ospreys almost always hunt in pairs <laughs> unless they have a chick. Uh so this they release this big eagle. He takes off. He's just rehealing from a broken wing. He actually gets up in the air. Instantly out of nowhere, two ospreys come in and knock him down, break his wing again. Oh my god. Uh because they just hate they hate each other. Because they eat the same they're the same animal. Yeah. Uh, I, Eagles will eat more carrion if they have to. Their their digestive their digestive system is more aimed towards that ability. But they're both fish eaters. They're both that's a main source yep. of their diet. They're hanging out in lakes yeah. and rivers. So and ospreys stuff. will take any chance they can to take out an eagle. Jeez. Em. One osprey versus one eagle, eagle will always win. Yeah. Two ospreys versus an eagle, it's probably gonna go ospreys. They they did end up saving the eagle and he became a uh like an animal mascot, basically, an animal education. They're like, sorry, Jeff, you're yeah. staying with us. Yeah. <laughs> no, because healing one broken wing is a lot. Healing a second one, rebreak, it's not happening. Yeah, you're not going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be, so he became an animal ambassador. Good for him. I mean, it's an easier life, especially with ospreys out there. Oh, yeah. It's just I had right. one buzz my head one time. So we have an osprey nest we're used to at the Audubon, at the Scioto Audubon. So you guys were close to it at Green Lawn and that. But okay. I was riding my bike down to the climbing wall one day. And I'm, like, going along in summer, and I knew they had been out, and they had been spotted, and they, like, roped off this section, right? So I'm going down this hill, and as I keep going, I, like, could hear it go over me and cut the air because, like, it just went silent. It was like, and I could, couldn't could hear the rustle of the wind anymore for a second. I was like, what the heck? And this thing went right over the top of my head. There's a rabbit, like, eight, nine feet ahead of me, and that thing comes up and just kicked its wings up and, like, dove. <clears> I just <throat> saw, like, this this poof. Of fur? Of everything. Yeah, yeah, just grass, weeds, flowers, and then bird feathers, and this thing just snaps it up and it was gone wow but it was a big bird like yeah. when it came over me i was like that is massive and i was just like i couldn't understand what it was doing and then i saw the rabbit I was like oh this is gonna get interesting <laughs> yeah. and it just in an instant man right they in are, front of you they are like surgical oh yeah hunting nobody don't ever release your pets i've had <laughs> to kill many of them but some of my favorite videos are when people release like their hamster or their mouse and like they're releasing it in the field, and like ten seconds later, there's like a hawk swoops Snatches in or a peregrine up. falcon. And they're like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. "It's like, what did you expect? You released a white mouse <laughs> into a grass field." Uh, it's, it's it's a target great. on its back, yeah. Instantly. Yeah. So we were in Chicago <laughs> surveying. I don't know how we got talking about birds. This is, this is what we oh, do. Oh, we're tangents. on Shugle Storks in oh, Florida, okay. and yeah. yeah, we're in Chicago. We're under a bridge. So when we would sample, when we'd be done surveying a site. We try to go into somewhere in the shade because we got to sort through all these fish. We got to weigh them, got to ID them. It's a long process. It's longer than doing the site, like actually catching all the fish. Right, right. So we try to pick somewhere shady because the Chicago rivers don't have any like tree cover. They don't, you know, it's basically a big ditch. So we are under this bridge, and all of a sudden we just hear screaming 
and we're being covered in stuff. What? And it's feathers and blood, and we're like, what? A peregrine falcon had swooped in. There was a nest of pigeons right above us. Uh, oh, my God. And it had swooped bridge. in, and it was ripping this. And they fell into the water, and then a peregrine falcon ended up not getting the pigeon because it's seen us. Yeah. Freaked out, swam to shore, and then was trying to dry off. It, you know, it was trying to dry off as quick, hissing Those at us. so crazy. There. The, the pigeon just floated bird. down the river. The guy at Serpent Mound said that we have two mating pairs of peregrine falcons in Columbus. Oh, yeah. The buildings yeah. are great for them. I They're, thought there were more, but he said there's only two right now. They're highly now. territorial. You got to think yeah. about the space. Even though the buildings are tall, yeah. the actual square miles isn't a lot. And yeah. he said that the feeding box was because I told him a story about our buddy uh, Thorne who had a video shoot and had to go up on Levesque Tower and came out one of these little windows, and it was just a freaking pigeon cemetery, bro. I bet. So he said that's probably its feeding box. They probably don't live there. There's they probably live there on to another eat. skyscraper. Yeah, I was like, there. that's fascinating. Oh, yeah. yeah. So here's the <clears> steam <throat> around town. Stoner's dad, hmm. Neil, there's a, ne- uh, there's a nesting, uh, nesting pair on Blanchard Valley Hospital in Columbus for peregrine falcons. Uh, yeah, my dad's got pictures because he works at the hospital, and he'll go to the room that they're in where they nest against the window. We got a lot of birds, raptors taken. Yeah, Yeah, I I saw a massive osprey in it's the uh, Midwest kind of thing. We're on that little little island, Tobacco Key. There was a big osprey out there, and it was like just you know when you get in warmer climates too, just it has more color and vibrant, Mm -hmm. and just the feathers on it was just like it was a very stunning bird to see. Because life's easier. Yeah. Yeah, well, living what's, close what's, to the tundra. What's the eagle? Is it a Filipino eagle or if the Philippines eagle? The one that's like blue, like its beak is like it looks like something from Avatar. It doesn't look real. It's like I can't think of it. It's mm. one of the strangest birds. They're I've so ever seen. diverse, too. and it's like a tropical even, eagle. But even the raptors, beautiful. Yeah. They vary so much. Just, the harpy eagle is still probably the scariest. They're cool. As far as the big eagles, they have the shortest wingspan for their body weight. It's only like six foot, and they're giant birds. They're like four foot tall. Uh, because they're they're jungle flyers, they gotta have short wings to be able to navigate. Yeah. But when they get out in the open, they don't fly very long distances because they just they can't. Yeah. Uh, but their talons are specifically sa- shaped. They're primate specialist. Their talons are specifically shaped to pop the skull cap inside the eye. Pop them like monkeys. Yeah. Like, but they they Crack take them open kids. like nuts. Yeah. No, they'll take your, they'll take your kid. Wow. Uh, but they'll get right in the eye, and their claw is made to go right in and pop the brain case. She she is. Why? Because Special, huh? that's what they specialize in. Yeah. There's other eagles in the area eating generalized food. They specialize in primates. So primates are very but dangerous. But what I'm saying is, is that their killing mechanism? Yes. That it's, is how they kill the prey. Monkeys are very, pri- pri- primates and monkeys in general are very hard to deal with because they have very hard grasping hands. Their bites are nasty. So gr- an eagle grabbing one is very dangerous. Yeah. There's several points it can still be fighting you before it dies. Unlike a fish or a snake or whatever, you know, right. you're worried about one thing. Right. So these guys are specialized in just hit, when they hit them, they're dead. Just boom, your brains drop some. Pops That's it with terrifying. that talon. Yeah. It's good night. They have taken children. They will get you. That is terrifying. The I Filipino always love the video. Eagle has hair like Justin's and a blue beak. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's pretty funny. There's pilot. a there's a lot to work with here to make like a good horror movie of like you know the harpy eagles you know like swarming down like the the what is it the crows the or the birds, birds the yeah, uh, birds. Hitchcock. Yeah, yeah, the birds. That's a, yeah. Like, that's some freaky stuff. Tell you, pelicans got a little bigger, we'd all be dead. I mean, Speaking of which, I saw a migration of pelicans. At Indian? In Iowa. Oh, in Iowa. In yeah. Iowa. Oh. I woke up. We were going out west to go camping, my wife and I and our dog. And we wake up in the van, and she's like, Rib-. I'm like, what is the problem? She's like, look out the window. And I'm like, what? And it's just like a sea of pelicans. Mm-hmm. That's I'm Like awesome. a river atop you, and you're like, is that what I think it is? What? And we're yeah, like, there's no way that can be pelicans. Pelicans in Iowa? Google it. So they no, yeah, they, that's crazy. So they breed in the Great Lake systems and in the uh, the Crater Lake systems. Hmm. So they only spend part of their life in salt water. Hmm. People think of them as tropical birds, but Chicago yeah. has a giant population of white and a little bit of brown pelican. Mm-hmm. Okay. So brown brown pelicans are the endangered, the federally listed. Hmm. Do you ever did you see any with the big crest on their bill? I don't know. They were. It was early morning. And so that's I, weird. If you've never seen pelicans, if you see them on the coastline, they never have it. They may have a little bit of it, but they grow this big sideways crest on the end of their bill for mating purposes. I know what you're talking about now. I haven't seen those, but I know what you're talking about now. So first one I ever seen in Chicago, like that kind of thing, we were at where the Displains meets the Sanitary Shipping Canal. For anybody, I don't know if anybody in here lives in Illinois, but you'll know where that is. It's like you're saying the sky turned white, and I'd never seen a breeding pelican. 
or a pelican getting ready to breed, and they have these giant, like, sideways crests. And I'm like, I've been all around pelicans in Florida, in Louisiana, North South Carolina. I've never <clears> seen that. And it's because they're not breeding. They're not active. But, the, you know, they've got these giant crests on them. They look just like pterosaurs. Mm. Yeah, they're huge birds. Pterosaurs. Bring, bring it all back to dinosaurs. That's not a dinosaur. Oh, here we it's go. It's a flying reptile. Oh, here we go. Big difference. Big difference. It's not a dinosaur? No. Flying reptile. Pterodactyls are dinosaurs? No. Not. Flying reptile. See what I have to deal with. Are you serious? Whole different lineages. Should we go there, Jay? Do I keep poking this bear? <laughs> if you want. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, uh, look at the face Emily. Emily. Just, That's hilarious. So, yeah. you know, like, God, there he went. There he went. Mosasaurs. Hey, Bert. Oh, my technicalities is right. <laughs> Mosasaurs and plesiosaurs, uh, like albansosaurs, stuff like that, were marine reptiles. They're more closely related to snakes and monitor lizards today than anything okay. else. Yeah. Uh, so not related to dinosaurs pretty much whatsoever. At but all? they did exist during the reign of the dinosaurs. Sure. So sure, they're the in all the line. movies. They're in all that stuff. But they're much more reptilian. Gotcha. In their appearance, you know, uh, they're basically big marine monitor lizards and snakes uh, with more of their biology. Like we think some monitor or some mosasaurs actually had forked tongues to taste the water and stuff like that. Like you'd see in monitor lizards they look and like, snakes. Yeah, for That's sure. Wild. I could totally see that. And then, oh, I thought you said four tongues. You said forked. 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 <clears throat> and then uh, stuff like pterosaurs were a whole lineage of flying reptile that started pretty much at the same time the dinosaur lineage started. Uh, they're not from the same base group, though. But they did, you know, they were, as they were evolving, getting bigger, more specialized, it was during the reign of the dinosaurs. So most people, like, reigns, like, tyrant reign, or, like, how we kind of classify reigns of animals, it's the most, or the biggest biological class. Dinosaurs were. You know, dinosaurs were, had these giant sauropods that were 110 feet tall, you know, 20 or 60, 70 tons walking around. Good they had the grief. giant theropods like T-Rex. They had the ankylosaurs, these big armored tanks. But the other guys that were around it were like, basically, right now we're in the reign of mammals. You know, most of the big fauna yep. on the plane is mammals, but they're still birds and they're still reptiles. Sure. So that's how it is with dinosaurs. Their dinosaurs reigned, but there's still other lineage groups. There's no dinosaurs. Hmm? But there's no dinosaurs still kicking. Birds. Birds won. You think there's still dinosaurs out there? So there's stories. I think we talked about this last time you're on, but we talked about over in I think Africa, the and, Congo. What's it? But yeah. what's I think the, what's the likelihood that some like with people saying they spotted a pterodactyl? Oh gosh, Mark's here. So, Yo, T-Rex a bipedal Mark, reptile. What's up? It's not a bipedal. It's not a bipedal reptile. It's a <laughs> dinosaur. They were their own group. So where they go? Picking. No, uh, so no, like pterosaurs and stuff like that. Like, I there's all this stuff like convergent evolution, where species will be very, very separately genetically related, like extremely genetic, like not related, and they'll form similar body plans to like, fill similar niches, like okay. crabs, like like crabs. But like for birds and bats, for example, they have if you look them from the top view, they have similar body plan layouts, stuff like that. Bats have a membrane, though birds have feathers. But when you just look at the outline, they are really, really similar animals because they're doing similar things. The pterosaur thing, there are options. The pterosaurs had groups that were very small and very large. There were some pterosaurs at the end of the mass extinction event that were the size of that cup. They were fuzzy hmm. and they had like their frog mouth pterosaurs. So not all pterosaurs had those giant bills you've seen. Some actually just had mouths with teeth. Some had mixes. <clears throat> like it, they were a humongously diverse group of animals. Just like dinosaurs were, you know, had all kinds of shapes and sizes. So for pterosaurs likelihood to survive, they actually do have a little more, in my opinion, likelihood because they had small members present. You know, dinosaurs had some small members, but mammals were sitting in the wings waiting. Mammals yeah. reproduced a lot faster. So those niches were being, after the mass extinction event, whatever you think it was, mammals were able to take the dinosaur's niche immediately. Right. They could breed faster. They had more generations in the it same time frame. It was like a frame. shroop. Yeah. Like we can... Everything goes back to like a weird little shroot animal yeah. almost. But pterosaurs <clears throat> did have to compete with birds. Birds were left. Birds did, were evolved at the end of the dinosaurs' reign, or what we would call a bird modernly. They still had some teeth and stuff like that, but there are still some birds today that can have teeth. Like the egg tooth, for example, is the last. Birds most, with teeth. Most birds have what's called an egg tooth. It's the last tooth that uh, most modern birds have, and they use to hatch out of the egg. Get out, yeah. It falls off when they're done, yeah. but it is kind of still a tooth. 
Wouldn't yeah. that be just a real sick joke? You know, you get born and you can't get out of the egg. That would suck. Right? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so for pterosaurs to survive, it could be. It really, it, they could have been, but I think it, it's much more likely that something evolved to look more similar to a pterosaur yeah. than pterosaurs survived all this time. Hmm. Not because I don't think they could have survived that long, that longevity, but there was a lot of competition yeah. right out the gate that yeah. they had to compete with. Birds, once again, they were breeding really fast. They were really good parents, so they were really hard to compete with. Hmm. So there was all these, at the end of the dinosaur train, there was all these little animals they were ready to take over. They were all in underground. The yeah. They were way up on the mountains yeah. where it wasn't affected, like birds. Whatever, whatever the mass, you know, mass <clears throat> extinction event was, and then stuff like crocodilians. Yeah, they There's just sat it out. Here, yeah, <laughs> but there was stuff like Prestosuchus. There was like a cat-like crocodilian. It was in the trees. Yeah. It acted like a panther. Oh yeah, there's all kinds. Borosuchus was a giant terrestrial crocodile that chased down dinosaurs to eat. Whoa. So crocodiles didn't survive like all of them. Very few lineages of crocodiles survived the mass extinction event. The ones that could not eat for a year and be fine. Right, the ones right. that could sit in a hole. I feel like those crocodiles saw the ones leaping around on land and were like, you know what? I'm just going to like Homer Simpson back into the bushes here. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, just dip off into back the ocean. Into the so here's a question. Where did all the mega crocs go? Why they just, did they die off? They couldn't. There was no food for them for an extended period of time. Really? So that's why it's a mass just, extinction. Those guys were dinosaur specialists. Oh, like okay. Dinosuchus, the 60 foot crocodile. Yeah. Had to eat really big animals to yeah. survive, even though it was eating them not regularly, like it was taking six or eight months off. After the mass extinction, they're not there. There's just like they're nothing just, for yeah. It. yeah. So yeah. the next biggest thing is the size of a dog. You're yeah. sixty foot long. Yeah. The buffet is not very good for you. Right. No. You need to eat very little amount of food. And then no. the other ones, bugs, grubs. You can't, yeah. you can't literally live off peanuts if you're an right. elephant. Right. Earthworms. Yeah. Right. 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 Here you go. Yeah. So great question. While we're before we move on from dinosaurs. Burton's asking your thoughts on the Van Meter Visitor because oh. that seems like a to- Do you know the Van Meter Visitor? Oh, yeah. yeah. We've we done an episode. I think we did a, go ahead. I think we did a Patreon episode. Of- it, may, yeah, it may not be a public episode, but we've done it. It's our first Patreon. But, you know, it seems like a dinosaur by all descriptions. Yeah, and in a sense, we, we think it's – we speculated it was a deep uh, inner earth-like oh, or yeah. a cave system well, creature. Well, it was in the cave is where it retreated right. well, to. Well, that's what we kind of got into when we were having that discussion with – uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, yeah. Because it has that big... Li- um, like the horn? The horn that lights up. Shoots I mean, laser beams and right. out uh, of it. However they... Dis- I mean, that's just what their descriptions, what they so were seeing. what that could actually be. be yeah. yeah I mean, you think it was living in the caves? Perhaps. That's what we... Per- if it was a biological Well, it ran into creature, the cave and never came back out. Exactly. So and that, when they opened up the cave, that's when they first saw it. The brick plant was op- accidentally opened the cave system up, mm-hmm. harvesting stuff, materials for the bricks. Okay. Yeah. And then... Yeah. At the, it depends on how what version of the story you want. The one version has six of them circling over the town, all different sizes. See, the one that we heard was there was an adult, but when they retreated back into the cave, it, it was a, like a, a a small one, like a child, and mm-hmm. then like a mother almost. So the night when they were shooting it a whole bunch of times, they're like, we've shot it like 30 times. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people, a lot of the townsfolk claim that there were six of them actually flying around, and they weren't shooting the same one. Six times they were shooting, you know, at all of them, mm. and they did retreat. Uh, they really didn't. They're one of those cryptids that get all this fear and stuff like that. They didn't do a whole lot. No, they show they shown some lights in the windows, but we do have like owls, for example, are bioluminescent. We know that now. So a lot of sharks are bioluminescent. Owls. So they have a certain frequency of bioluminescent that's only visible to the other species of their owl. So basically, these owls will be in these dark forests, and other owls, and they can see, see each other. So when they're coordinated to hunts and whatever, they can see each other. They, they stick out like neon. But they're not actually glowing. They, they do us. glow under, yeah, our eyes aren't able to pick it up. What I guess what I'm trying to define here is, is it bioluminescence it is, or is it that they have an ultraviolet that they can see off of each other? They kind of like, kind their of like. Their skin produce, or their feathers actually produce a light, but it's not in our frequency that we can see. They're making the light? Yes. Yeah, platypus it, do it. A lot of shark species do it. Is it like Egyptian platypus. blue? Huh? Is it Egyptian blue? I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, that's why I was wondering because, like, it's the whole thing with, say, butterflies and then certain moths that imitate certain butterflies. Right. Well, the butterflies, if I'm saying this correctly, I don't know even, but I want to say that butterflies can pick up these different spectrums that that's how they can tell. Because, like, the imitation right. moth won't look the same. Like, the actual wing See, that's of the why butterfly they breed together. has this, like, crystalline structure almost that. So they actually do produce the light. 
The butterflies do? No, no. The, oh, the, the, the owls. The, that's what I'm saying. Okay, that's... Platypus do it, too. A platypus? Uh, there's a lot of shark species that do it. The sharks were actually the first one to be discovered. Can I just say that's the one pet, if I could have one, would be a platypus? platypus Venomous sweet. egg-laying mammal. I want it. There you well, go. Sign me up. Where's Mono, that at? Monotremes. They're the last, uh, one of the last two monotremes. Yeah, where can you buy one? It's, it's, you can't. Say that Come again. On. Say that word again. Monotreme. When, but what does that mean? Egg-laying mammal. That's all it means. Egg-laying mammal. They're, they're, they're lineage. They're a group of animals. Them and echidnas were early, early proto mammals, basically. So they were like the first thing moving from reptile to mammal. The they warm like, blood, milk. Yeah. They, they look, used to lay in eggs. They look like what I would have made in the first five minutes of getting my Play Doh set as a kid. Yeah. With like all different colors of Play Doh and every different animal part, or like those etch a sketches where you could put different clothes together on people, so right? You like, own a CRISPR machine. Yes. So that's what you'd make. So but, but, I, straight out of holler. I think somebody, I think it was Born Not to Run. Probably. I don't think you can. May have, have put on there. Can you? A uh, why yeah. does a cave no, creature have wings? You're not allowed? I guess. No platypus. No zoos in the U.S. have them. Oh, okay. No zoos? There's Actually, no, that's, r- that's wrong now. Like San, San Diego or something actually has one. It's the first one in the U.S. in a long time. They're really endangered. They're under a lot of peril in Australia. It's like pandas. They don't want to... They don't want to send them to other countries right, right. where they don't have enough there to take is care of Is that where they come programs. from, is Australia? Yeah. I'm very unfamiliar with their yeah. origin. and They have all the weird, the, all the old species of mammal are in Australia because mm. it's one of the older continents. At we least need for, to go to Australia. You know, megafauna. Yeah. I would love to go there sometime. Everything there kills you. Spiders, snakes. Platypus. Yeah, it's exact opposite of New Zealand. New Zealand, there's like nothing there to kill yeah. you. Other than there's some wild cold. boar. It's cold. And yeah. seals, they have forest seals that'll eat you. I don't even know what that is. A forest seal. Seals that go up in the forest. Why? Because they want to. There's penguins out there too. Dude. I know that part, but why are there seals up in the forest? Why do is there, why is there penguins up in the forest? Because they're curious little guys. Those are the seals. They're following the penguins. They got a they got a <laughs> black tie event up in the yeah. uh, up in the woods. No, they take it as like a, the same thing that penguins go up for uh, breeding potential, like uh, safety no. for their offspring, and no then kidding. food options. Yeah, penguins Did, have a Bohemian Grove up in the forest in New Zealand. <laughs> I think I've seen that documentary. Yeah, where they do like travel up to this like nice little spot with some water and doing these sacrifice. I believe that's chin, I think it's chin straps too <laughs> for New Zealand. Okay, the really fancy. But yeah, it is a night and day difference from there in Australia. So somebody asked, Almost "Why would call it grown out? Oh my gosh. <laughs> why would a cave <laughs> creature have wings? <laughs> Mark, why would a cave creature have wings? Where's that at? It's way up there. It would... okay. Oh, I see at the top." Uh, well, the cave system's vast. It's very big. So there, yeah, like uh, somebody said bats, but we're talking about like the mammoth cave system, for example, like it may stretch all the way out to Iowa for Van Meter and it goes all the way up to New York, sure. all the way down south. There are these caverns, these these voids in it that are extremely massive. Yeah. For you to crawl along the bottom to get to the other side would take days, if not weeks. Yeah. So if you have the ability to crawl and fly, you can take that travel time from weeks to, you know, minutes. Yeah. Trying to fly across these, you know, these mega voids. Me and Emily, Emily, what was the name of that cave we were in in Townston last year? It had a chamber above it, an inland lake. Whoa. So you, we were in this chamber. It was 700 meters one way and then 1,100 meters the other way. Whoa. But the chamber where you could see, like, it dropped into a little hole and the hole opened back up. That lake was like a mile long and then, like, Jeez. Where is this? In in Townston. It's a cave you can go in like you pay. Townston? Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, it's like a little roadside stop. It's worth it. It was fifty bucks. And I was complaining on like all the caverns in Ohio are like twenty. And then we went down there like, oh. This is why. Worth this it. is why. They shut you this up. is actually like you could fit a Walmart in here. That's crazy. They probably already Walmart probably has. There you one. go. How do you ever tell Le- the Tuckalichi? I've, I've been to something like that. I don't know where that was at the time, but it was like a story of like there's, somebody had a pond, and the one day they didn't have a pond. So there's one sign for Tuckalichi. Went into the cave, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a big yellow sign Opened for Tuckalichi. Yep. All it says is Tuckalichi Caverns this way. I don't know if I've ever been to that one. It's it's there's like I said there's one Tuckalichi. sign. Ruby caves, I think. Okay, I've heard of rubies. I've been to ruby caves. Well, the only reason we went to this one is the Airbnb we got was literally in front of this big stupid yellow sign. Yeah. And we were there for a week. Every time it came out the door, it said, Tuckalichi Caves, this way. Well, and finally we're like, That's all right, let's go. The advertising worked. It's literally the Well, song. we were there for a week they, staring at this thing out the window. like that They knew where to did. put the sign. And then we get there. Was it like, like an everyday conversation? Like, you want to go? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> well, like we it, had yeah. a plan of other stuff we wanted to do. And finally we had one afternoon. We're like, well, we got 30 minutes. And it was yeah. like a five-hour spelunking like, thing. What do we do? But those Tuckalichi are great caves. unexpected adventures. Oh, yeah, you know, it was That's awesome. worth every second, That's every wonderful. cent. You know, it was it definitely, but it was one of those things we get there, and I'm, it's like we're already in line, like it's fifty bucks a person. I'm like, it's a hundred bucks to go in this hole. 
<laughs> <laughs> like, really? Like, what are we doing? I almost made an inappropriate joke there, but reserve, <laughs> yeah. reserve myself. It's cheaper there, too. <laughs> uh, no, it was worth it. But yeah, so cave creatures, there's there's a lot it, for these massive caverns. You know, we talked about the Stanley Gaster. If it was real, it was probably one of these cave creatures was coming out. But they would have, it makes sense to have wings. So, okay. They can fly If there are cave creatures spaces. of that magnitude, there would have to be probably other cave creatures unless you're getting, so, what I'm trying to get out here, I'm going to make it short. Is there space ample enough that there could be an entirely underground biological sphere? ecosystem? Yeah. 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 So the Ozark Mountain cave systems are the one we have the most well documented. Okay. Uh, they're the most biologically diverse cave systems in the world, but it's because they've been the most studied. Okay. You know, it's it's okay. kind of that, you know, cart before the horse kind of thing. Sure, that there's sure. probably other cave systems that are either just as or even more biodiverse. They have tons of food. Uh, the Ozark cave systems actually have terrestrial salamanders go down in them by the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, every year. They go into these cave systems to reproduce, and then they come back out. So that's an outside source of food coming in, whether they're eating the salamanders yeah. or they're eating the offspring. Yeah. You know, so they, there's, these animals are basically, if you think of it, collecting nutrients from the outside world and bringing them back into the cave right. system. Also, the waters that flow on, on the surface often end up in cave systems, at least for a short period of time. That's another bringing outside nutrients into the cave. Question. I'm going to go full Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles here with this mm -hmm. one just because of the waterway and the flow of that and all the chemicals that get into the waterways and the spills that we have. Like, what's the potential that some kind of weird super mutant is brewing in an underground cave? Van Meter uh -oh. Visitor. I was going to say that's what we're talking about. Snelly Gaster, Van Meter Visitor. But I'm saying, like, do you... Th well, I guess what I'm saying with that is it's... I'm thinking cryptid yeah. or cryptid, maybe unexplainable not but this i'm saying is more of an explainable like we're creating the cryptid i'll leave the other cryptids that i can't figure out where you came from necessarily but or unless maybe you think that's a possible genesis point for them no i think they're they're evolving in these cave systems and like for the vm inner visitor thing they cracked into this cave system a couple of these animals came out did not like it got shot at it was a scary world went back in and some of the stories for the Van Meter Visitor is they covered back up the hole after the last couple went in. Oh. Because uh, that brick factory closed down and all that. Uh, so I think that, like, we talked, you know, we did the Arkansas Giant Killer Centipede for our, our Encounter Quest documentary, or our speaking point. And that's a similar thing. I think that they're living in these cave systems in the Ozarks, and every once in a while one comes out. It, doesn't ha it does not like it, goes back in. You know, it's a cave animal. It's specifically designed for that. Same with I this. Could definitely buy that. Snally Gaster would come out. Of, they were said to come out of caves like every 23 years. And it seemed like a reproduction thing because people okay. would find their eggs everywhere. Not anymore. You know, this is 17, 1800s when people said they'd find, you know, like softball sized eggs everywhere after seeing what was essentially a dragon coming out of these caves. What'd systems. they do with these eggs? Most people ate them. Yes. Keep in mind, it's 17, 1800s. Food wow. is food. Yep. Meat fell from the sky in the 1800s. They didn't started we, eating it. Didn't we learn how to grow maize and all kinds of other <laughs> shit? You got to eat these things too? Still hungry. God. But to, damn. A, to answer your question, tell them about the fish that you found with, I think we told you today when we were out the river. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. How fish are, are changing due to pollution and things. The antlers. And, Coming out of the eyes. Oh, um, oh, God. I was God. like, what are you yeah, talking Bob, about? I don't know. This, 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 this is crazy. This might keep me up at night. Yes. Is this weird? Yeah, it's horrible. But it's true. Uh, Quickly, think, Burton, to answer your question, we're very close on the merch. Portal. Don't eat it. Let me <laughs> let me think about that for a second, Jake. So I'm not close. sure I'm allowed to talk about that. Mm, gotcha. Uh, you put me on the spot, and I may not be able to. Oh talk. no! Don't worry about it then. Okay. Uh, I, either way. Well, I'll tell I, you off air. That's fine. Can I there may a, be an NDA involved. Can I give him a, a layman's version that doesn't involve? Wait, if I tell it, there's I didn't sign no NDA. Yeah. Jimmy, so Jimmy Woo. so there's this guy we know that. Uh, well, basically, was oh, gosh, pulling up, you, was fishing. I'm grabbing a beer. I'm getting off camera. For was this. pulling up these fish that had tumors growing out of Jay's their eyes. It's like big, like antler, like coming out of their eyes, and, and they were even attached. From what I heard, they were attached even the muscles on the eyes. So when the eyes would move, shut these up. These things would move with it. Yeah, yeah dude. But um, grab me one too, bud. It was in an area where people were actively swimming and stuff, and but it's, 
plant or chemicals from these companies, you know, corp- or businesses. What was it? Selenium, area. right? You said. Um, it was selenium? I forget what I heard. Yeah, I it was, what I was, uh, from what I heard, yeah, it was selenium and it, poisoning. Getting, getting into the water. They were system, causing yeah. these insane tumors that turned into basically eye antlers. Yeah, and all the on all the fish there, but only certain kinds of fish. Only uh, I believe it was smallmouth bass. Largemouth bass were all fine there, but all the smallmouth had these. That's so weird. Protrusions. But well, that's why I asked when you said you got in the water. I was like, man, I don't. I'm sorry, but like, thanks, buddy. The side I, river's fine. I don't think I'm getting in any river. The side river's no, fine. no. He the said today fine. the Big Walnut and Darby Creek are super clean. Big Darby's amazing. I'm gonna take my kids to it. Okay. In two weeks. It just freaks me out a little bit. I don't need to grow like a prehensile no, tail or like a, you know some kind of like tumor out of my it, you gotta forehead. Be, depending on what water. So uh, side of river scores excellent all the way up to Green Lawn. All right. Now there is trash. That's different. Every now and then there's bodies. That's different. That's fish food. It's different. The fish, the giant catfish will eat that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Born to Run says, 22, was it, it's 22 bucks a ticket? I swear it was 50 last time we were there. But that was two years ago, three years ago now. For what? You got oh, robbed. Oh, into the caves? They did. They Maybe got oh, Born not to Run's gone there? They were scouting you out the whole time. He's, he's reading the sign, guys. He's oh, reading the sign. We're going like, to get him. Our group, and right when you rolled out, they're jacking the price up. No, That's our group funny. was 50 people. Fifty people? Yeah. Goose no, girl. Justin, it was twenty two. They made bank. Okay. That day. I drank a lot, so I'm not gonna argue anymore. This <laughs> girl said it was a Simpsons fish. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, well, hey, to this fish. girl. Oh blinky. Yeah, the three eyed uh Goose whatever girl. Hello. fish was. We got MBI's got a picture of that on the office wall because there's a well graffiti thing in Chicago that was like thirty foot tall of that fish. Oh really? really? Them so, Simpsons? Yeah. So we that's can what, we can condone now that the Simpsons are like I would. Say I don't know what they are. I don't know if they're gin. I don't know if they're creating the future or if they're just predicting. That's it. what I'm it's talking weird. about. It might be just cre- like predictive programming. That's pretty weird. I don't know, but it's bizarre. It is weird. And then the same creator creates Futurama, yeah, which exactly. I love, and they're coming love back. Futurama. Really? Yeah, so coming aren't back. They, isn't it they've live? tried to a couple times. I, it might be. They? It might be now. But yeah, was it, who bought it? Nick, was it Netflix or Amazon? I think uh, it's Amazon. Fry, man. Yeah, He's it might best. be. I'm Philip J. Fry. I like Zoidberg. Zoidberg, Zoidberg freaks Zoidberg's me great. out. He's so gross. <laughs> I know. That's why I like him. Zoidberg's so He's my gross. favorite one. Hey, maybe then we'll have dinner, yeah, perhaps. <laughs> 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 okay, now I have to have you do something from our, our soundboard at home. Oh, okay. Bubba, great voice actor. I love doing voices. Yeah, he should definitely. I do a lot of voices. Zoyberg. My he favorite Zoyberg line awesome is when they're at the horse races, and Hermes is sitting there, come on, baby needs a new pair of shoes, oh. and Zoyberg just slats in, Scro- screw your baby, I need those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Oh, do you want to tell them, since we're doing all about the cryptid zoo today, do you want to tell them about sea serpents, or at least one type of sea serpent? <laughs> they're big. I, I don't know. What do you mean one type of sea serpent? Oh, never mind. We can't talk about that. Never mind. That comes out next week. I guess, oh. oh, yeah. We haven't released that episode yet, right? Yeah. Grand Lake are the lake monsters. Oh, well, we, we did a whole, like... What was it? You can say the name of the sea serpent. You can let everybody here know wait, what which, Monday's episode is. The Gloucester. Oh, that one. The one on, on East Coast and Massachusetts, right? Mm-hmm. Like Gloucester Gloucester. Harbor, Harbor Monster is what they called it. Yeah. Mm. That's it. An absolutely crazy sea serpent encounter because of the documentation with it. Hmm. Uh, you know, guys at home will have to listen because it's really it's it's one of my favorite sea monster or sea serpent encounters because I can't ruin it because there's literally so much documentation with it and so many credible people. Yeah, I'm talking local politicians, Catholic, Catholic priests, all these people from the area took it very seriously and yeah. did a very good investigation. Okay. And came out with a really cool conclusion. Something you wouldn't expect from, like, cops and all this stuff. Yeah. I was reading the comments. Emily. Spoiler, just And then look what uh, Burton said. Uh, Emily keeping him in line. Yeah, you know, she always does. <laughs> the problem is, is we, guys, we we record, like, at least eight hours a week. Oh, oh yeah, at least. Hit. So it's kind of hard to remember what's not what public you, yet yeah, and what's I know. already oh, public. Yeah. 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 Or even oh, what yeah. we yeah. talked yeah. about. That's usually the hardest. I will, I will uh, say this. Gloucester, like, it's the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, oh. Sorry. It's a coastal sea serpent. Yeah, it's, it's a harbor. Easter, yeah, it's, it's on the East Coast in Massachusetts. That's uh, I'm best I can remember. Yeah. I will say when people tell me, like, uh, okay, I'll tell you this, but, like, you can't repeat this. Like, I listen, but I don't commit it to memory almost. Right, Bob yeah. Bob doesn't remember. So I'll take it in because if I put it in my memory bank, it's coming out. Oh, yeah. So I have stories in there that I've forgotten. That's my problem. So Countless. I can filter them, but it... it it, it's at a price to where it literally goes through my head. And I just don't <laughs> hold on to it. So, what's another cryptid animal like for the cryptid zoo? Well, we went over the hyenas. 
We what did about the Nundi. The Nundi bear? Yeah. Well, that's Af- is that Africa? Yeah. What is that like a member berry? Um, yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember? Nundi bear. What are you swallowing? Wow. You don't remember? Brain just <laughs> what? You don't remember? You guys said a weird word, and you said a weird word, and I'm in the middle of it. Uh, the Nundi bear. I remember. Is an episode <laughs> that I hate because I I did a nice script and I was oh, so tired because so it was our first week with Atlas. <laughs> oh. So mm. I was so tired. I hated the episode, but we had to publish it because we, we were out of backups. And everybody loved it. It literally it blew up. It, like, at, cool. And I was so tired. But I like 30 or 40 percent of the script was cut out like live during the episode. I was yeah, like, too much. I ain't reading any of this. Yeah. And everybody at home, we don't edit. Like if we don't have to edit, if it's not a big yeah, catastrophe, yeah. we don't edit. Like yeah. Jay dropping his phone. Most of those are in there. Uh, when the mic fell off, when you broke the mic was hilarious. Oh yeah, <laughs> the whole mic stand broke off the table. Oh god! And then you could just hear, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> and then we come back like we're back. But no, the Nundi bear was this creature in Africa, and it's still seen to this day. And I cannot remember the name of the forest off the top of my head. Okay, uh, probably Congo. <laughs> no, it was I'm, southern I'm Africa. G- I'm kidding. It's way way further south. Uh, but it's kind of described as a, once again a giant hyena-like creature. Africa currently has no native bears. Uh, so it's, okay. the word bear is kind of when white settlers were coming in, you know, South Africa, a lot of white people down there. Uh, you know, they were, show, they were when they were seeing these animals, they were the, kind of the ones that gave it. It was called the Nundi before that, which is like, what was it, skull popper? Uh, Say something what? like that. That's what it means in yeah, their bites language. Bites the back of the What's skull cap these animals skull popping? Because it's the fastest way to kill prey. I mean, yeah. when you really think about it, yeah. it's efficient. If you can bite through a skull casing or crush a skull casing, probably going to win. I mean, it is, but that's some, like, serious king of the hill alpha shit of... That's nature. Well, bears will do that down. in general if they can. Like, with moose I calves actually, and stuff like that, they'll bite the back of the skull. I actually saw a story the one time of a guy who was, like, in one of those I Survived episodes and... Yeah, he interfaced with a uh, brown bear population. Didn't know that this trail oh. was like kind of shut down. Oh, okay, not bear man. No, 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 okay. no, no, no. Another guy. That guy was and interesting. He's like, oh yeah, it's a, it's a weird sensation when that bear is like biting down in your head, and then like the vision just goes out because like it popped one of his eyeballs. Gosh. He made it. He totally lived. I think yeah. he was blind in both eyes maybe afterwards, and like his face looked a little like you know, a little <laughs> not so great. But he was like, it was it was funny too because he was like, it was completely my fault. I didn't know. I didn't get the report. I didn't do this. He was like, I don't want the bears to be punished for being a bear. Like right. I, a bear. Did, I did completely wrong in every way, and I understand that. Yeah. And I accept what happened. And it's like, that's kind of cool, man, because a lot of people are like, man, that bear, what's its problem? Like, it's yeah. just being itself. Yeah. Like, that's what it does. It's protecting its cubs. It's living life. Yeah. <laughs> that's why, yeah. It's, it's existing. Good. That's oh. its problem. But we did... That none, like there was all kinds of animals, but it was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sightings. Literally, the sightings were pages and pages and pages. And I just had them as brief description. People killing them. A couple of them ended up in well, a live one ended up in a zoo in the in the UK in 1840s. Uh, it like was that. 18 something. Something yeah. 18. Uh, and it died in captivity in the zoo, and it's still classified as a nundi bear in that zoo's catalog. Mm. Oh, uh, body's not there anymore. You know, it was like a, it, it was on display. Keep in mind, this is a zoo that has other African animals on display, so that gets rid of Miss ID. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not a hyena because there's other hyenas on display. So, where's all so the you don't think it was or? a bear at all? Now, at the end of that episode, we get into Africa did have a bear. Yeah. The uh, What was the name? I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, an atlas bear? An atlas bear. There we go. Good no hint. connection with why we named Atlas, is, by the way. Uh, but <laughs> this atlas hint. bear was in Africa, and its range is really undetermined at this point because they were hunted to extinction roughly 1600s. If you look at that, though, the Nundi bear was really famous 17, 1800s. So when you start uh, genociding a population of animals, it's happened all over the, all over the world, uh, they, their behaviors change dramatically with, with the population that's left. So going from the Atlas bear was really similar to our brown bears. You know, they okay. are they're occasional, they are carnivores. They are herbivores, or, so they're omnivores, but they will take meat, they will take it alive, they'll take it dead, they'll take plant matter. You know, they're not going to go out of their way normally chasing down healthy prey. Right. You're limping, you're gone. You know, they're going to take you, but... It's an easy snack. 
you know, they're not going to go rest, you know, wrestle with the wildebeest if they don't have to, or attack humans if they don't need to. Right. Or they, you know, what happened though is these bears were extirpated or locally wiped out. Uh, if we look at rattlesnakes here in Texas, the Texas rattlesnake almost no longer rattles because of rattlesnake roundups through the 90s into the 2000s. So what would happen is these guys would take these canes, rub them all along the rocks and wood stuff. Every rattlesnake that rattled got killed. Hmm. The only snakes that were left were these ones that don't rattle because nobody could find them. Now they're having a big problem with people getting bit by rattlesnakes because now they don't rattle. Hmm. Because we did that. We did that to that population. We genetically selected the ones where the, we didn't do it on purpose, but we did. I just feel like it's a just giant Rube Goldberg that we're living in. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, it's, when you start taking out right. the cogs, bad yeah. things happen. So yeah. this Atlas bear. Slowly it happens. This Atlas but then bear it's could like be reaches a point of yeah. You see what you Everglades. see the result. Yeah. Well, I was thinking that with what you said earlier about the shoebill storks and how like how are these birds getting out here? And I was thinking in a weird way, the illegal animal trade is helping these populations grow. Some animal, yeah. Some in populations, some, not yeah. all of them. Some they eat them but like a pangolin. That's a soup. The... Like mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, uh, unfortunately. But so this Atlas bear in our episode we talked about could have been that what was left of them became. Extremely more secretive, uh, yeah. and extremely more aggressive. Like when they get you, they you know they they're hunting humans now. You know that, the Nundi bear was classified as hunting a human. Like they weren't occasional human hunters; they seeked out humans. They that wanted was to their eat humans. Prey. Yeah, uh, like a polar bear. Sure, you know, polar bears view us as food. Other bears around the world most of the time don't view us as food as often as may, you know on a case by case basis. Every time a polar bear sees you, all it sees you is is food. So we could have Jeez, selectively man. bred this population of atlas bears to be really secretive, hyper aggressive, and then they were mem- you know animals aren't dumb. We talked about it off air. These animals aren't dumb. If your main predator is humans, they wiped out ninety eight percent of your population. You get angry. You remember that. I better start eating humans. The orcas there are attacking some the boats. Yeah. Yes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's getting to a tipping point. They're training. The animal kingdom is going to like be like, hey, you guys have been top dog for a long time, and you've been screwing over a lot of us, and we're not taking it anymore. So the Nundy Bear's yeah. coming back. Van Meter visitors coming up. <laughs> Shoebill storks. The orcas are on board. Shoebill storks are about to wreck The house. orcas are uprising, bro. Harpy eagles in the jungle are going to pop your skull while you're running around. <laughs> Burton said skull popper's a good name for a band. How about a metal <laughs> band? Andy, yeah. Andy's in here. That's skull really popper! Is. I'm going to pop oh, that's Andy? your eyeball! Yeah. Okay. He said, Gloucester is pronounced Gla- Gloucester. Gloucester. Gla- is how you said. Andy, you missed it. I Gloucester. Pronounced, I pronounced your last like name earlier. Gloucester. He's from there. He's like Gloucester? it's right around the corner from him. Okay. Yeah. Gloucester. 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 <laughs> Gloucester. <laughs> Gloucester. <laughs> Gloucester. We're nailing this. Jay went. Jay went. Gloucester. Gloucester. <laughs> Goose girl's one hundred percent right. I don't know if it was the Adirondack Paul chair that gave you the revenge. The what? Bartles and James. Sh- Gloucester. Gloucester. <laughs> Sitting in my chair. So interesting thing <laughs> with orcas is they're pretty much the next humans. The next what? They're awful. Orcas. Yeah, they can be just as 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 far as any other animal on this planet. They can be just as petty. And aggressive and kill stuff for fun, just like humans. Oh, they do, yeah. But we just did. So this is a freaky fauna that's not out yet. But I'll, I'll, we'll go for it. It's free. It's just freaky fauna, right? Yeah. Uh, a Friday our, show. Our little Friday show, a freaky whole different fauna. podcast. Uh, but humpback whales are called, being called the guardians of the sea. Oh, beautiful. For about four thousand years. It's, that's our first documented case of it. People saying it now. Humpback whales are highly empathic. Uh, they've been seen saving other species of whale from yeah. whaling ships and stuff like that. They'll often put their their own bodies in the way of other animals' calves, like other different species of whales' calves, trying to save them from whaling ships. <clears throat> uh, another thing they do is, in their early part of their species development, when they were a lot smaller, orcas almost wiped them out. It's called uh, what was it? It's generational trauma. Generational traumatization. So these guys were hunted so often, especially as calves, by orcas. Mm-hmm. Now the whole world population of humpback whales, every time they hear an orca whale do the hunting click, it's a little noise they do to signal that, it's okay, we're getting ready to hunt, humpback whales, if they're near, will swoop in 
and save what animal, whatever animal the orcas That's are amazing. hunting. Whether it's a stingray, a seal, another whale. Now, there's two ways of thought of this. That the humpback whales are not doing this for the benefit of the animal that's being preyed upon. Yeah. And there's a little bit of evidence for that, that there's been dead calves, dead animals, when the humpback whales get there, and they will still keep the orcas away from that meal. Hmm. So what that is, they're trying to starve out their predators. So basically, we're going to keep you away. If you waste all this energy hunting this thing, you're not going to get to eat it. But well, they're holding a grudge. Yeah, but Spite. there's also highly it's... empathic. So they could be doing it the other way, too, that they care generally enough. They remember the trauma that it's, they've been through with orcas, yeah. and they're making sure other things are safe. I would think for them it's a two-bird, one-stone situation. I, it's 100% with you. That There's it's, nothing but enjoyment on their side of the table, like, screw you, orca, and right. we are good guys in this. So 2019, a gray whale calf uh, basically got killed by this pod of orcas, and the, so— as the mom and the gray whale calf got separated, gray whales are just a little bigger than orcas. Yeah. As far as baleen whales, they're very small. They evolved that way when stuff like uh, Leviathan and Megalodon were still swimming in the ocean. Leviathan was the big sperm whale that was eating other whales. And then Megalodon. Jeez, um, sperm whales are, were definitely more aggressive. Well, Leviathan was the sperm whale that had two sets of teeth. So sperm wow. whales don't have teeth on top right now. They only have teeth on bottom because they're hunting squid. They yeah. eat soft-bodied prey. Uh, Leviathan was the bigger sperm whale that had teeth on top. It had the biggest teeth of any animal of all time that we know about. Uh, what? They were the reason Megalodon went extinct, and then orcas are the reason Leviathan went extinct. Orcas ate vi- Leviathan? They hunted them out of extinction. They basically they hunted their prey source oh. where the Leviathan couldn't compete. Competition. So anyways, these, uh, these orcas, this gray whale calf gets killed, uh, but it gets separated from the other before it gets killed. Gray whales aren't dumb. They, the mom knows when she's separated— there's like 12 orcas. She's not winning. She starts trying to take off, go for the shallows, and try to save herself. They catch up to her. Out of nowhere, two male humpback whales come in, and they start fighting off these six, seven orcas. And they're not. They're losing. They're starting to lose this battle because the rest of the orca pod starts coming over, stuff like that. Three different pods of humpback whales showed up. It was like 30 animals come in and just start beating the crap out of these orcas. Wow. These orcas didn't know what to do because the, 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 these humpback whales the whole time. Uh, another thing, I did miss this, that they'll go, like humpback whales will go silent when orcas start hunting until they get there. And then they'll make all kinds of noise. Hmm. And that's this calling is in crazy. All the humpback whales. This is like a real battle. Yeah. Yeah. And orcas. It's going to be a movie soon. We're writing the script. Are you? Yeah. No. No. You should. I know, right? I'm just thinking in my head now. Okay. Local legend. Uh, is there a video of I'm all not, that? There's video of some of it. Uh, I I don't remember the name of the biologist. It, it was observed by Oceans a marine biologist. Oh, that's yep. cool. Uh, See, but yeah, orcas. What if the entire ocean system? Now this is going to be a crazy one. You got to follow me on this. I was thinking like, okay, here up on the land, everything's already messed up. We're here. We're all fractured. Just keep people divided so that you can't get anything done other than what you want done, and only some people are happy. What if that ocean system? And the orcas and these humpbacks and all these whales get together and they go, hey, look, look, it's time for a truce, guys. We've been killing each other off for too long and fighting and this and that. We can all share. We can get along. What if they can get to uh, uh, homeostasis much quicker than we can on land? And then they they become the superpower. They probably would. So the book is called Whales on Stilts. Are you kidding me? Whales on (laughs) Stilts. That's a real book. Yes. Read it in high school. I just wrote it in my head. <laughs> uh, we didn't win, but by the way. I don't think we would. Uh, whales bloop, on stilts. Did the bloop end up winning? No, basically a mad scientist. No, no, no. I'm, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I won't tell you if you don't want me to. I think I should read this. Uh, it's a really good book. Okay. It's, Is it long? No, it's like, uh, like a, I read it in high school, but it was like a, like a, like a middle school. Read, so. A couple hundred pages, maybe. Whales on stilts. I'm still going to read it. I'm still going to read it. <laughs> I can't read it. I'm sorry. I had to. Generational trauma in mice shows that multiple generations will show so fear it's... responses to subjects in sympathetic oh. scent made for experimentation because their ancestors were shocked. Well, that makes that sense. It was present. Yeah, it's, it's 100%. Yeah. It's the same reason why humans are genetically dispositioned to be afraid of snakes and spiders. Yeah. What do you think about epigenetics? And the who's the scientist from England that's uh, well, I mean it gets passed down over that. time, right? It's like basically your your genes are encoded with experiences of your ancestors yes. in a way. Mm-hmm. So uh, if we look at it, it's called in animals we call that genetic knowledge. Uh, so here's my weird thing is there's a lot of stuff we like, commonly accept 
as biologists that, that nature does. Yeah. We don't think we do. Mm. We're just, I'm, you know, I'm a firm Christian, but we are just animals. Yes. You know, whether sure. you believe in God or not, it doesn't matter. You know, we, we're I all part of the same. I told my five-year-old that we were animals. We're animals. About I remind people that a lot. But like, my five-year-old's like, I'm not an animal. It's like, we're animals. You I mean, really literally, are. we have Humans the same organs as, you know, it, and anyways. Yep, we won't argue that issue. Uh, generation, or genetic knowledge has been proven through, like, how do you think snakes know to hunt when they hatch? Great white sharks, when they're born, they immediately go start hunting. Turtles go to the sea. Yeah, they have this stuff that's, and it's not all of it, you know, they don't, as far as we know, they don't remember certain events in that parent's life. They don't right. remember certain pan- events in their ten generations back life. But they have these this kind of book, little it's books like to run by. Yeah. This is where you go. This is like we see that with all kinds of animals. So why wouldn't we have something like that? Humans that have never experienced a snake are often uncomfortable with them. Like they don't have them in their environment. Spiders, universally, ninety nine point nine percent of spiders will not hurt you. Yeah, you know, I've been bit yeah. by all kinds of spiders and you know, it's whatever. But most humans are dispositioned to be afraid of them. Because your ancestors at some point lived in an area with a lot of deadly spiders. Yep. So you ha- your body knows that's not good to be around. Or being afraid of the dark. Yeah, because mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff in there with we a lot of not, teeth. We are mm-hmm. not nocturnal animals. We can't see very well at night. Well, probably saw better back then with actual moonlight and starlight. And Yeah, but yeah, still yeah, not as good as a pollution. hyena sure. looking at you at night. Sure. Oh, no, no. Yeah, exactly. Or, yeah, a, or a big cat or whatever, yep. you know. I always wonder that, too, about, you know, we got so cognitively advanced that physically we didn't have to adapt or develop any advantages. We we outsmarted evolution to our negative effect, I yes, feel. Yes, yes. In my exactly. opinion. We're weak. Uh, our necks are very soft. I mean, we get whiplash very easily. We got to a point where most biologists talk about, you know, whatever you want to be, believe is your faith, that we got to a very low population on the planet at one point. Yeah. Humans are what we would call humans. We're very close to this extinction point. Mm. But that's when whatever event you want to put in looks like our brains developed a little more. We got a little smarter than everybody else. Hmm. And then we boomed. We Does took anybody over the Earth. know what that event was? No, Mushrooms. and a lot of that's that's a big common theory. And is like this not surrounding just the fact that when we learned how to cook and had fire? And that's one thing that a lot of people try to opening up calories. That's, Terrence that's a McKenna's huge uh, springboard. Terrence McKenna's theory is the stoned ape theory. Well, mm-hmm. see you, Justin. When you used Which to have is, to eat hey, raw buddy, meat, hey buddy, take care, buddy. See you, Justin. Yeah. When you had to eat raw meat, Jay that Lamb, he's the, there's you nothing. Know, you, you're you're took pooping to raw meat. It. Yeah, well, you didn't break it down. You well, you had to chew it. so much. Mm-hmm. So you couldn't eat that much meat. Brain cavity you know? size expanded. I don't know, like eight times, and the muscles that mm-hmm. you know that they needed to chew got smaller. Yeah, restricting so, our skull. Yeah, so that is part like, of. We don't have a sagittal crest anymore. There's something before yeah. that. Before we learned how to make fire and cook meat. Well, that's what I'm that's asking. Mushrooms. That's what I'm asking. I think. Hey, Em. I mean, the neurogenesis of mushrooms and what, I mean, Lion's Mane, you talked to, you know, uh, us, we were talking about Lion's Mane before we went on air. Mm-hmm. It's not just psilocybin mushrooms. No, Mushrooms no. in general. It's just, so right. cool thing for the brain, I mean, it's about un- Lion's Mane. We talked about, we got to talk you got, about yeah, Remind too. me whatever you wanted me to talk about. We got to talk, talk about, about the mushrooms. Lion's Mane is the only uh, organic compound, and I, I don't have it off the top of my head, the only organic compound... That has proven, or how do I word this? Has had clinical studies to show the reversing of nerve damage in the brain. Yes. Right now, the chemicals in lion's mane are being used for Alzheimer's treatment studies. Yeah. Uh, that's why I start growing them. Is you make tea out of them. You yeah. ex- when you soft boil them, uh, you get a lot more of that compound out. Ooh. And that's why we're making tea out of them. Cordyceps, lion's mane. Uh, uh, that sounds turkey great. tail. Yeah, so we have um, lion's now mane you're all and oysters. The lion's well, here's mushroom. the thing: yeah, like the psilocybin that, mushrooms, if you load that's the one those, we're bringing you. Yeah, uh, that's great. Really appreciate it. If you so like everybody's all about uh, basically microdosing now. It's a right. big thing in tech. Mm-hmm. You know, you take what's considered you know a heroic dose is five grams. That's where you're going to go see aliens and dwarves, and and you'll see some shit. Let's put it that way. Not I've seen dwarfs that uh, were also machines. <laughs> yeah, the, that's our favorite song. What is it? My computer just became self-aware by Trevor Moore. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, talks about doing mushrooms and oh yeah, seeing that stuff. The machine awesome. elves is what they're called. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I've heard. I think is it McKenna talk. McKenna about? talks uh-huh. about yeah. the the machine elves. You know but who they are right. No. 
They're actual mushrooms. We did an episode on it. I mean, I don't you're mean they're their, actual. You're talking to their consciousness. That's the spirit of the mushroom. Uh, their 100%. You're connecting to them. 100%. That's what you think is going on? Yes. That's what they are. They're gnomes. The, the image minute, of the gnome stop, stop, is stop, the mushroom stop, people. Stop, stop, stop. So Dude, no, our no, buddy, I'm people, not going to mention mushrooms. It's the normal mushrooms Listen, you're in the yard. Let me tell you a, Is that a what you're quick saying? story. Like you're talking to the network of them. Yeah, it's just their consciousness. They mm-hmm. have a, like we share a consciousness. We're all one. That sounds like a woo woo thing, but it's not. Like our consciousness is shared. That's with the mushroom consciousness. When you take it, you consume it. You're Connecting with that with content, them, especially yes. in a five gram dose where you have you literally get transported some people into a little world like our buddy. I'm not going to mention his name, but literally would not come, come out of the camper one night <laughs> because he was in that world. Oh, yeah. Waterfalls. They had little weird wheelbarrows, little houses. They're like walking around and, and doing all this work like the, the seven like, dwarves, like the Oompa Loompas. Basically, this that's what he saw uh, with lakes. Like there was a whole world dude and these things were consciously aware of him he was consciously aware of them and it was all in Never closed eye like visuals this. that's wild we did an episode on this about a year ago that's one wild. of our bigger episodes that's and actually a very good theory i mean you know back to prove that at all we can talk about smart mushrooms well, here in a second that's what okay. we're talking about uh not too long ago was the the mapping out the dmt worlds with the slow drip studies of like uh, rick strassman or strassman's a part of it i believe mm-hmm. but they're trickle dosing people with IVs and keeping them in that so state. it's like yes. four hours five hours instead of blasting off minutes. into this center of the universe flight yeah, to right. the center of the universe mushrooms where like huge weird creatures we can talk well we have to talk about bob we brought up mushrooms we have to talk about bob so bob real quick though i want to finish yeah. the mushroom thing when you low dose it's like 0.1 grams it's a tenth of a gram and you take that every day for three days. Not then you're noticeable. off for three days. You, you, then you're on for three days. Mm-hmm. So Less when you do caffeine. that, it basically creates neurogenesis. And then once every six months, you do a large ju- dose is what people tend to do. So the large dose, when you, like, you, when you trip, trip, it doesn't really create those neuropathic gateways. But the microdosing does builds it up. The, yeah, it builds up that. When you network. do the big one, that's where you get your download of consciousness. That's where you have your ego shattering experience, where mm. you have these realizations about nature and oneness and war and what you're doing with your life or not doing with your life. Um, you but don't you don't need to take a lot, dude. Right, a tenth yeah. of a gram. I've, I've seen a lot of the three old, days uh, documented that's cases. That's nothing. That's the power of it. Yeah. yeah. Like when they would give people small doses back when they were first studying psychedelics too, and they would they would take some housewife and be like, "Hey, you know, come on in. We're gonna you're gonna be our trial," and give them a dose, and they just you know the questions they would ask them, but just the looks on the people's faces too of just like they're like in this trance of like they're seeing all this wonderful stuff or feeling all these magical experiences, <laughs> but they're also having these very sharp realizations you know like and they talk about that in different therapy counseling where they would say hey oh yeah for couples to come in and have one therapy therapy session and each of them has taken a dose of mdma you will get three years worth of value Wow. Oh yeah, for because you won't be in therapy. there being nice. Like I don't want to hurt your feelings, honey, or this or that. There's no. You're going to get to the, right to the communication. There you go, Em. We got to do wow. together. Right, right to the actual messages. Right to the and it's same with um, chronically ill patients or you know. Uh, uh, there's a lot with with long term depression stuff like that. Yeah, like, I really think there's a lot to mushrooms. But you want to talk about some of their crazy biology? I do. Yeah. So do you guys know about Bob? Bob who? Okay, we'll get to Bob. We have to hide Bob for a minute. So mushrooms are the oldest complex organism we have fossil evidence of on the planet. Uh, at the youngest date, they're around 800 million years old as complex mycelia networks. So mushrooms are actually the thing you see, like you guys, like everybody at home, the little the, mushroom the you buy at the store. Body. It's the fruiting body. Yeah, you can cut them. You're not actually hurt. Like they're gonna die anyways. They like they're gonna. Up. Yeah, it, you're not hurting the actual mycelia network. It's like the leaf of a tree or yeah. something. Yeah, like the fruit or, or the, what, yeah, the apple on the tree. Uh, but so we have 800 million year old mycelia networks. Uh, there's some people that claim that those fossils are actually 3.1 you know, billion years old. Michael Cremo. Uh, but because they are so. I like but him. the thing is, they That's were great. just as complex as they were today. Yeah. That time ago. Wow. They've been around the whole time. 98 percent of plants on Earth could not survive 
without one type or another fungus in their life stage. At some point in their life stage, whether it's seedling to germinate, adult tree, they cannot survive 98% of all plants on the planet. They're like cannot the survive of the forests. Yeah. yeah, they're the stewards of everything. They just they break down all. everything. Now, they're in the oceans. And they make other plants communicate Recordia with mushrooms. each other. I don't know that they're, they're actual mushrooms, but they look like they're mushrooms. They're in every environment, upper atmosphere and the Arctic tundra. There's a species of fungus that lives in the Arctic tundra. I'm not specifically talking about mushrooms here. We're talking about fungus as a, a whole unit, a whole, you know, tree of life. They're not animals or plants. Uh, they're actually much more closely related to animals than anything else. Uh, there was a recent study by, I believe it was Dr. Money of, I know his last name is not spelled money, but it's pronounced money, uh, from Miami University. He just did recent studies where, uh, they figured out mushrooms can resource manage. So would, they'll not digest food closer to the mycelial network hive versus rather going away for, during, to get farther stuff during times of ease to save that stuff near them for times of hardship. That's a type of intelligence. Yeah. yeah. You know, plants and stuff like that, they just eat whatever they can get, you know, mm -hmm. whatever they can reach. <clears throat> so they rather work harder when it's a little easier and then cut back when it's a little harder. Yeah. Uh, he did a long-term study. We tried to cover it, but it was really, you know, it's a really, it's, it's a long. Really, really He thick. got it to where he can get them to count to three uh, with the resource management. Like, They'll notice when one of the three pieces of food is missing, but when it got over four or five, you know, they really weren't noticing. Like, they weren't freaking out where, where they start looking for more food and stuff like that. So that's kind of how he did the study to see if they could count. So it noticed when one was missing when they only had three, but it had four or five. It either it didn't care there was missing one or it couldn't count that high. Like so it maybe just, it was what? like that resource management that where you're saying maybe weird, that dude. network was it knew. at that size that it was like, I need three. Right, and if yeah. there's less than three, survive. then I got to hunt. But right, if there's five. I don't care. Right. I just need three. So it's it could a be the neural they, network, but it right? could account I mean, for that five. Here's the thing: my silly network are better than neural networks. That's why I mean, they transfer but, data but That's faster. why they work so well with our brain, and why we have natural receptors to mushroom it, computer bring mushrooms into ours, and it literally goes right to our brains. Mm -hmm. So and works with our network, our mm -hmm. neural network. Doctor Money also did some studies where he put uh, some of these mycelial network colonies in extreme drought conditions. The ones that survived learned how to survive. Uh, so like for mushrooms, like they'll cut off whole chunks of their body to drink the liquid to not die. You know, that they're able to do that. They're able to selectively kill sections of their body to save, or, to save the rest. Uh, so they put these, this small group uh, through these drought conditions. The group that survived, he took to a giant group of multiple different fungal colonies he put this little guy back in there with this big group. This big group has never experienced drought conditions. They don't know. They've had perfect habitat the whole time. He puts this new group this into these drought conditions. They all survive. He figures that basically they integrated together. He This colony taught the, all these other colonies how to survive the drought conditions effectively. He didn't lose a single colony. When the other one, it was like 93% death rate. For the first time, they've never experienced. Right, right. So, so the that ones that second survived, generation did much better. Yeah, they didn't die That's like at all. That's ridiculous. Now Bob, Jesus, Bob's an, an all star on Crypts of the Corn. Bob is the single largest living organism on the planet that's ever been recorded. Still alive today. You guys can go visit him out in Oregon. That's the Olympic Peninsula. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bob is a honeycomb mushroom, <clears throat> uh, pink honeycomb to be exact. Uh, he is two hundred or no, he's two thousand two hundred acres. Uh, if you were to stack his body up into cubes. He's actually a whole, st uh, was it a state or national forest? National forest. A national forest on his back. Pretty sure it's national. We now have evidence Bob will selectively kill off forest on his back to promote grassland growth to re-nutrify the soil. And he's been doing this for about 45,000 years, killing off sections, letting it regrow his grass, and rotating it like a clock. Uh, Bob does have two sisters. They're around 35,000 years old each, roughly, you know, from estimates. Bob's around 45,000 years old. Uh, and Bob's not showing no signs of aging. How they discovered Bob is they cut into the ground one night, do a core sample. They came back the next day, 100 acres of forest had died. What? So Bob has integrated into every tree. 
So we used to think it was a mutual beneficial relationship that the trees were trading nutrients for stuff they were getting off the mushrooms. We now know it's a more uh, controlling nature. The mushrooms controlling the trees. The mushrooms yeah. are controlling all the plants and yeah. even some of the animals. They're sending the information. They're controlling some of the bug species on Bob's back. Bob has full control of everything on his back. That's but Freaking when it benefits wild. Bob, it benefits. It's one of the healthiest forests that's still left in yeah. the U.S. Yeah. Because he's constantly, basically, think of his like crop rotation. Yeah. Old growth forest is he's knocking it out periodically to re the, the soil. Pens. Moving right. the chicken yeah. chicken pens, moving the cows is there over any way here. To propagate that. Bob. Bob. Yeah. He, he, he does it himself. Seeds every year, yeah. or not I'm seeds spores across the U.S. Could you? Propagate Bob if you wanted to get a forest his, up and running. His species is all over the place. <laughs> yeah, it I'm takes saying. a lot of conditions right. though for Bob. Like Johnny Appleseed. There's some of these right. that are very large. Bob and his two sisters are extreme examples, uh, but some of them are pretty large. Uh, it just takes a lot. It takes a really specific condition for them to be able to get that big without being killed. Yeah, you know, one earthquake, one you know this that breaks up the mycelium network one enough. Age. Yeah, I mean, he survived one. That's true. That's true. Yeah, Johnny Appleseed, he's just in mushroom so, like, spores. You know, yeah. Avatar isn't really that far off when it's like the mother no. Awa with, that sends communication and information all to all living things. It's kind of not that far off from it's what like those mycelium networks are doing. It's like mm -hmm. a documentary. Yeah, it's like everything is actually alive. Well, so soft the disclosure. earth actually soft is disclosure. alive and conscious. Yeah, it's all mushrooms. It's uh, There's mushrooms underneath the bed of the ocean. <laughs> I see it on the show. I got to see. We, uh, literally, it's a mushroom UFO on the show. <laughs> yeah, shirt. it's all mushrooms. I love that. <laughs> well, no, it's a. Uh, nah, I'm ruining it, everybody. Plug your ears. But the well, show, nah. The Rig, <laughs> is about that. It's about a giant oceanic mushroom that when humans started attacking it, it created a continental shift that sank some of Europe because okay. it was a defensive mechanism. It was not going out of its way, but when they were starting to drilling into it, trying to kill it because it was protecting basically oil reserves underneath it. Okay. Uh, it responded it literally caused a continental shift to drop all of europe into the ocean is a real story no it's a, it's a show it's a tv okay. show okay but there is this giant mycelial network at the bottom of the ocean there is mushrooms and fungus in the antarctic tundra they're in the upper atmosphere they've been here since day one uh they're integrated into every species of plant pretty much bugs all kinds of stuff like uh, i think it was local legend said earlier uh that some of them eat plastic not only that, there's a lot of these yeah. guys that love radiation. Like nuclear power plants have problems. I can't mention who. <laughs> we know. But yeah. a guy that worked with nukes, they had to paint antifungal stuff on their nukes because the mushrooms were trying to eat the warheads. Well, the fungus were trying to eat warheads because they love radiation. These guys... They'll clean up fucking anything. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, excuse my language. It's your show. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's true. They don't, they don't care we about... put the swear jar out here. <laughs> how bad the earth gets, they don't care. Like, so this thing, when we talk about these entities we meet in these psychedelic trips, some of them, a very small select some of them, seem to be super excited that yeah. we have found some way to communicate with them. Oh, yeah. Now... The cool thing is we found out mushrooms have been picking up a radio frequency since day one. Mushrooms react to all the radio frequencies in the air. I'm not when you talk, able to go to bed tonight. <laughs> so you ever seen the synthesizers plugged to mushrooms? Yes. Oh, yeah. So you know what that is? No. That's, if it, you plug that to our head, that'd be your neural responses, your neural pathways firing. That's you thinking in your head. Okay. To them, it's a similar thing. It's slightly different. There's all kinds of different terms for it we don't need to go into, but it's almost the same thing. Just the mushrooms version. They have complex, what, it, what some biologists would call thought. <clears throat> they're thinking all the time. When you start talking to them, they react differently. Yeah. When they're picking up radio signals, they're reacting differently. So that means whether they understand them or not is a whole other thing. But they can pick up your radio signals. They pick up all the signals in the air and do all kinds of stuff. Do you think all plants do? And I no, know, I know, this, I know that they're plants, but do you think plants do as well? Not like not to this level. We're talking no. about a whole different system. Well, not, I guess I should rephrase it. Plants not are really good degree, at making chemistry. I've heard the whole talk to your plants. They're really you know? good at that's making a little, this, like, that's, I think a, I think plants are a lot more simple when it comes to this kind of stuff we're talking about. Not uh, as responded. Yeah. You know. Th now, I do think there's some stuff to that, but it's not this level that we're talking about with fungus. Sure. It, it, I have one other question about this then. So if they've been here so long and they're this intelligent, why aren't they... Maybe they are. Maybe they're running. They're, they're running the show. Everything. Think about it. They've survived every mass extinction without mm -hmm. a falter. 
they will turn they don't care what happens on the surface whatever we do to this plant we nuke it to oblivion they're, they're going to eat the feast. nuclear glass they'll be yeah. fine they're going to eat the nuclear glass that's behind when do you think that that's happened already once before and that's why they like it because there's the whole theory that there's been nuclear war before and like there's been right. civilization and well, the world has started not to Darren Kuru not to right. drift too oh. far but they, hey, Jeremiah. The glass, what the if they are kind of like Hello, the cleanup Jeremiah. guys like you know when when we lose our our collective shit and you know everything goes down and then there's nobody left and we've nuked everything <laughs> the mushrooms are just like god they're just wiping the bar floor like they'll See, be back or they maybe I they don't want even it. think they'll be back no, maybe they I want don't, that nuclear glass to eat. I don't even think they care if they I don't think they want it I think they're pretty much at this state to where maybe we're going to handle make it for them whatever or maybe they're separate us. factions of good mushrooms and evil mushrooms and Leave the, my mushrooms the bad right. ones have hijacked mushrooms our are also UFOs our, our mushrooms are also UFOs world wars and <laughs> that's my, literally my shirt is a mushroom UFO abducting a cow I think some of them might be Jay, what if biological ones actually created theory. us because what they want us yeah, sure to get intelligent enough to feed them more feed them radioactive more. material? It's a symbiotic relationship. That's not symbiotic. So we That's spring up, character. we spring up like every couple hundred thousand years, and we, you know, it takes a couple more, you know, and we get to the point where we just start firing nukes everywhere, right? And the mushrooms throw a party, like, and they eat all that. Nuclear glass, whatever he's talking start about. Start the cycle all over yeah. again. It's you know, just like, a long 40,000 year cycle. Yeah. And they don't care if your head gets popped. No, yeah. not at all. By you a know? harpy eagle. Oh, yeah. I, was saying, I don't need that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. By a harpy eagle. That is, I mean, you a beer. that's interesting. Yeah. No, I'm used to grabbing you a beer. We do it both. I mean, we do Sometimes. Both ways. Sometimes. I'm going to have to find, uh, I'm going to have to read about some mushrooms now. But now when you, now when that lion's mane sitting here, Oh, Never. I'll be thinking about it. It's listening By the to way, you. we're getting a lion's mane walkie. -talk. Yeah, but it's a secure airwave. This thing is like a mom telling you listening. how it's, it's all. It's not your uh, Alexa sitting on the corner, you know, on your shelf. So it makes me imagine yeah. of like, you know, if we build spaceships or something to like drive them, we'll just have like these helmets with like this mushroom lining. A mushroom to, cap. Jay will be a perfect pilot. It'll just right, Fit right into over my head. They won't let us leave the planet. <laughs> so we are uh, trying to look into, we're trying to get a psychedelic researcher on. Oh, we are nice. trying okay. very hard. Yeah, very we hard. are trying, trying to, to get, line up schedules. Trying to get schedules yeah. So he was just at the mm -hmm. uh, conference in Denver for the psychedelic uh, conference. Okay. And I was watching his Twitter page, and it was just crazy. It was like, you know, uh, lollipops. It was like LSD, like spritz doses. It was. <laughs> oh my gosh! I oh yeah, it was in all package, just yeah. like look like candy. Right. Yeah. It was crazy. Because everything's decriminalized. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. Over the, yep. It's not crazy. It's just wild the fact that like. It was made to feel crazy that you were crazy if you did stuff like that. And now people are still kind of have that indoctrination to where it's like, again, you don't see people like, uh, I don't know how to say it. It's not like going out and getting addicted to something. Like if somebody goes to an Actually, ayahuasca retreat opposite. and does it's like one therapeutic session a year or every six months if you did a psychedelic or an MDMA drugs. or whatever it is. But we do lithium and we do shock treatment and we do all kinds of weird, crazy stuff. This is just you might see something kind of wild, but it's nothing's going to hurt you. But mm -hmm. you might have an actual breakthrough. But it's been very sequestered for a long time because I think it. You know, uh, sowed a lot of dissent. It didn't make people want to go to wars. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. You know, it ruined, yeah, it threw off the narrative. Yeah, times. people yeah. didn't want to fight. Uh, people like, wait a minute. Yeah. Everything is instant chocolate. Pudding. And then it kind of went over the crested Andy. wave because there was too they many got a people out in San Fran. They got after cats it. And There's some folks that got <laughs> there after was, it. Yeah. It got a, little, got a little risky. Got a little weird. Yeah. And that could have been pushed as well, too. Like, could have been. Could have been. Well, could have the been CIA had yeah. massive amounts of access to LSD. They made it. Right. They made acid. Well, yeah, and they Sandiston. were and they were Sandist uh, Sand giving it Sandista to people labs in or Sandiston Labs, something like that. What was the MK Ultra? The actual guy that ran it, that, as far as the documents say, when he had Jolly West, the barrel was one of the, was one of the psychiatrists. The barrel of LSD showed up in his office. The little glass vials. It was he figured it up later. It was the street value of like a billion dollars or something crazy. Yeah. yeah. And then it showed up in his office for a day, and then it disappeared a day later. Yeah. And he was too scared to ask anybody ask about where it. where it went. <laughs> or ask where, how it got there. He didn't know how it got in his office. Yeah. And then he didn't know where it went. Yeah. But I don't know. The only one, rip Uncle Ted. I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. To... <laughs> Uncle Ted. Get the five gallon drum of it. Uncle Ted. Sorry. Emily's, Emily's uncle did a lot of, or Emily's great uncle did a lot of acid. <laughs> but he plays good cards. I mean... 
Yeah, but he has a he has a permanent tick from it. We're looking at a renaissance right now, where solid research is finally here, <laughs> and it's being taken seriously. Oh yeah, there's. Um, I mean, for depression, like mushrooms are a whole, whole different like ball yes, game yes. for long term depression. Like actually, right. like there's. I believe there's a lot and stuff you can get over in therapy and stuff like that without having to. I don't like taking any kind of drug or pill. That yeah, but. I've never There's been places on like Zoloft or anything like that. I, I think it's also just for, like, if you have severe trauma, people generally don't, they're not aware of it. Right. They you lock, you lock, you lock it your up. Your body will survive. Like, your, oh, your yeah. survival instincts, whether it's psychological or physical, your, the, the what is it, the oud? The id. 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 Mm-hmm. The id will put up so many walls. Will protect the you. The lizard part of your head. Yeah. The will reptilian do everything part of your brain. Yeah. In, your, in its power. Yep. To keep you running how you're supposed to be running. Yes. That's the ego. Mm-hmm. Protects well, your ego. That's you have the, the, ego. the ego and then like the super ego and then the id. Mm-hmm. Like there are multiple layers. until, And that's what we're talking about, though, that when people do psychedelic sessions or therapeutically use it is they're you're basically getting to that core. And what we normally have is all of these have an walls, ego death. right? All these filters. Well, you know, this is how I think about this, or this is how I think about that. And when you strip all that away, it's just really kind of like that's when you have that like identity death, and you're kind of like, who am I? Right. What yeah. does my name actually mean? You know, it's just two it words, but who am I in turn? Like, have you ever had the the thought or feeling every now and then? It's like a Calvin and Hobbes uh, cartoon like that I remember kid, when I was a and kid. You used to look at your hand, and you're like, your hand's like a whole the, other. You're thing. driving it, yeah. yeah. We you're just weird. We just well, I think about, about it from behind my eyes. I'm that little so, alien. I was gonna yeah. say. We just did a whole consciousness thing with some of our members. Everybody's answer is slightly different. It doesn't have to be different, but, you know, when you do a, a big group of people, you get a lot of different answers. Yeah. Where do you feel like you are in your body? I know you just said, but where do you feel like you are in your body? Where am I in my body? Where, when you when you sit and really think about it. I think I'm where actually are you sitting? existing else everywhere. Now, that's, that is one of the three main – oh, sorry, Ben Dragon. The three main common ones. That you're like this outside force that's like I'm just looking through through your windows. eyes, but you're you're piloting the body. You're like what is it, what do you call that in video games? An avatar. Third person third a... person view. Okay. Yeah. Like a lot of people say that. I'm one of the ones that go, I'm right behind my eyes. I'm behind my eyes, but I feel like I'm beyond this body. Yeah. But I've also had the experience of being beyond and I understand the like what that, what that what that is. I didn't understand I bro. never understood that. You know, when I was a kid, or it's just like through experience, it's just a sensation that I get now of just being much more than a body. So, mm-hmm. where do you feel you're at? I would say behind my eyes. And Jay, I don't remember your answer. Mine was behind my eyes as well. And we had we did this with a group, so it helps. You know, when you have like thirty or forty people, because you get some really unique answers, and there's nothing wrong about any answer. Yeah. But it shows kind of. Oh, I'm going to ruin something for our own show for your guys' show. There's a flatworm study going out right now. Uh, I can't remember the name of the species of the flatworm. But it has a full, it has every organ we have. Everything. It's a really complex, not even a true, it's not a flatworm, as in what you think of like an oligochete flatworm. Mm -hmm. It's flatworm by name, not by genetic. Okay. Uh, It has every organ, or every organ group that every animal on the planet, every developed animal on the planet has. Now, they'll teach this thing certain hardships, certain pathways to get food, all this kind of stuff. And then they'll cut the brain off. Now, this worm is able to regrow both ends. You know, the part with the head will regrow the tail. The part with the tail will regrow the head. But for the part for the tail, the brain was gone. Every part of the major part of the nerve system was gone. You know, it did have a rudimentary, you know, the, what would be the base of our <coughs> spine left. Both parts remembered everything from the maze. Both hmm. parts remembered every cue to get food. So this is showing that maybe consciousness isn't as tied to the brain it's not. as we thought. And no. that's, I agree. I'm no. just saying this is studies that are happening right I now can, in modern science. Yes, they're finally that. getting there because yeah. materialist science have always said consciousness comes from the brain. So phantom I'm limb under, syndrome and that kind of stuff, you know, you're still... I'm you're, under the impression oh, yeah, you that our itch. brain is actually the antenna for consciousness. Mm-hmm. And we're tuning into this overall, all-consuming frequency. 
that we're all connected to and we can all tune into, like, think about it. Where does creativity come from? Where does an idea for lawn chair documentaries come from? Oh, it's coming it feels from. Feels like it's beamed into your head. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. It's coming so, into like you. M That's the muse. So is it your brain the receiver or is it your heart? Your That's heart, true. both. I yeah. think that I works think together. Your heart tells you what you're receiving. In your heart, Home you jellies. can decide what is right or wrong. So right with what yeah, you're you. getting. Right. And like, I always kind of thought maybe we were like, we're know. these biological we recording devices. It's a great stoner. Right? Like uh, we're all experiencing the universe. It's a good stoner theory. And we are like this <coughs> massive thing we're a part of that we feel very small in. I don't know. Maybe we're all like just recording this data too. And that's why there is so much of that. We feel that interconnectedness at times of like it does feel like this is all a giant shared experience. Like you can travel halfway around the world and see somebody you know. Or We're like, not so separate. Did something we, very bizarre to where you go, oh, this isn't as big and as crazy as I thought Did we it talk was. about baby God theory when we were here last time? Oh, baby God theory. No. So God with is, a little G. Baby God. It's a little different than that. Like demigods? Appalachian intelligence. If you guys are, any of you are in here. Uh, <laughs> I just in a, a pick and fights mood. I've been sitting in a river all day. Uh, no, so, and this is not the theory I subscribe to, but it is a popular theory. That we are all one consciousness, like you've already kind of said, but it's in training. Sure. We are what the consciousness itself oh. is a baby god in training to learn how to be a compassionate god. for every side of every argument. There are levels. You are hurting yourself when any kind of racism. You are being racist towards yourself. Any yes. kind of you know destruction. You're. And uh, there's a, I can't I mean, remember what the comic is. I mean, every culture has, do unto others, it's just the karmic law. Right. Jesus said, do unto others. Confucius said, you know, they all say this, and Buddha says the same thing. You know, it's stripped down to that, and it, what goes around comes around. That's just karmatic law. Mm -hmm. It's like what you're going to put out there comes back. You mm -hmm. put out love, you put out peace, you put out um, whatever it is. You put out hate, uh, it's going to come back in some way, shape, or form, and yeah. whatever you know, whatever life now or beyond, because I don't think the soul is is infinite as well. I think we're just right now in this spot here, we're like you said, it's training. It's a you're so that's like I said, it's not a theory I subscribe to, but it is a really popular one for this kind of such stuff. I can't remember who did this comic, but there's a good one where guy dies, you know, kind of wakes up on the moon. Yeah. And he's standing there next to God. And he's like, you know, all, he's asking why there's all this hate and stuff like that. He's like, I built it all for you. He's like, why just me? He's like, no, you don't get it. You're all one person. You're all my kid. Like, you're all, you got to do all this stuff to graduate to the next level before you, you got to understand hate, love, yeah. prejudice, you know, all this stuff. It's it's definitely interesting. I'm not that drunk, though. No, I mean, the thing is, is nobody, I mean, until you die or until you have some kind of experience or you know visionary mm -hmm. states or you, like you're only seeing a little window too right exactly like you know the people that are even doing these long-term dmt studies and, and those folks they're in then they're out then they yeah. go back to this reality and then all of a sudden everything's separate yeah. there's a rock there's you there's jay there's justin there's uh, you know, there's the the whatever bear you were talking about that's secret in Africa. <laughs> you know, there's giant the catfish. Nundi. The Nundi. Yeah, the Nundi. The Nundi. Remember Barry? You remember? <laughs> the yeah, Nundi bear. And everything I remember seems the separate. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the Nundi bear. Nundi you know, Barry. but that's it, a t-shirt. Nunderberry? Yeah, the Nunderberry. You know, one <laughs> one experience is the sense that you aren't a person anymore. Hmm. If you've oh, had that, yeah. that's where it gets real weird. Is that like this? People you, who think they're like a, a cat or a dog? No, no you no, just no. you're I'm nothing. Kidding. You're just nothing. I'm, no, I'm you're just, just kidding. You're, you're not you're, anything. You're aware you're that you're our community. I'm just kidding. Kind of, kind of like you were just saying before like, about like what is your you're awareness a person, of? But like there literally is yeah. no body. Yeah. Like people right, have yeah. the experience of like infinite, infinite sea of essentially you are everything. Your sound, your light, your your matter, your your energy. There's like this whole thing is just like. Literally a meat body. A meat suit, yeah. Yeah. Well, and all of this is basically a construct, too. It is. It's and just it's created by Depending us. on how the molecules well, and the way we are interpret it. vibrating exactly. really slow, matter is just, you know, energy vibrating very, very slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. A weird, Nikola Tesla. A weird one Anne was talking about earlier is that some of those people, when we were talking about doing that kind of test little thing, describes them as being, like, describes their own soul as being like, 
glowing balls or even gel. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. they feel like so weird when when I was a kid. I always it was it's so hard to explain, but it's weird doing that thing and finding out other people thought it too. That my soul was like this kind of like a jellyfish is the best way I could describe it. And it had tentacles attached to people like, you cared about. Right, right. And it was like these little tendrils that were out, but it looked like that. And I always thought it was weird. But then we did that the, like a couple weeks ago. And two other people said they had that same thing without me prompting it. I'm like, okay, well. And then it's not just, yeah. Like when Em all... just put in there that she sure. felt that way, you know, it's. Yeah. It's. When you look into it, it's weird that stuff you may think you are only experiencing actually. Thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people are also experiencing Yes. More like likely 100%. than not. Yeah, more likely than not. Yeah. You're never, whether, whether they're having depression or whatever, you're never alone. Right. Like yeah. It's all the human condition. Well, right, the yeah. problem is, is the sense of being alone. Or yeah. the, the shame that's... or guilt of feeling nobody wants to talk to you if you don't feel good or you're, you know, What is the saying? Or... I always mess it up because we never do it when I'm sober. <laughs> Mental illness is not your fault, but it is your responsibility. Hmm. That's pretty. Good. That's a pretty good. Statement. Yeah, because honestly, you gotta, you really gotta. People don't know. You have be, to want mm-hmm. to be brave and get help. Yeah, and figure out what works for you. And and uh, you know, we say all the time, like psychedelics, those kind of things. They are not for everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Right. They just. I'll aren't. say. And don't take a lot. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. More psychedelics does not equal more fun. <laughs> Let me tell you. It's like you. alcohol. There is that point to where you, you start have... going downhill. Yeah. Faster that you can come back up. Well, the well, thing with booze for me, I throw up and pass out. You don't get that. From you have to ride it out. You're not passing out. Right. You're, no, you're on this train. You're on this, like, hyperloop train. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Was... Bullet train. But it's all about letting go. Drink milk. You just got to let go. Chris Rock, or no, Kevin Hart's mom. Milk does nothing. I just, that's one of his skit. It, oh, really? Where he was like, he was tripping on mushrooms. Oh, yeah, really I remember that. That's so he's funny. Like, dude. And all the, his drug dealer told him, drink milk. <laughs> he's like, I'm not drinking milk. And then he calls his mom at like three in the morning. He's like, Mom, I'm in the hotel tripping really, real bad. Oh, God. It, but she's saying, she's, drink milk. He's like, <laughs> Mom, you don't mushrooms? <laughs> like, that's not what we need to know right now, baby. Uh, <laughs> let's go get a gallon of milk. That's hilarious. So shift gears here. What's like latest news in Ohio Bigfoot stuff? Because you know mm-hmm. we've we've seen some like I've talked a lot, Jay. You go ahead. A couple things recently where you know there was um, I think it's Adams County. Um, there's a lot of places right now in Ohio that are being pretty heavily investigated. Hmm. I, honestly, I don't. I, I haven't been keeping up Necro, close you tabs right. on it, huh? Necro, you may be right. Sorry. Marcus Parks on last podcast and left may have been where that quote came from. Oh, mm, okay. Nice. Uh, shoot. But I don't, yeah, I don't know the current situation with. What'd you say? Any, any current new sightings Bigfoot or. Bigfoot in Ohio. Bigfoot research or anything in Ohio. Uh, I mean, B's working on some really cool stuff. But, you know, we, ha- we well, know a couple yeah. of the BFRO guys and gals that are out here right now. Yeah, we know nothing with like Dusty Ruth from BFRO. Yeah. Uh, Last weekend, awesome. There's yeah, definitely been some school. cool sightings recently in Ohio, and, and then, not just Bigfoot either. Other crypt, cryptid creatures as well. Um, like that's not that. our show. True, true. Uh, so, what do you mean? I was like cryptid creatures. Oh, gotcha. I just like pick, <laughs> on, <laughs> I pick on everybody, but I'm just. I like those guys. I met them at CryptidCon last year. What What have you? What What's been reported? Uh, well, we saw a video of the Ohio Stick Man. Um, we saw. Video footage of that. Actually, that was in uh, at the Frogman Festival we saw. <laughs> but we can't tell you who we saw it from or who somebody, showed it. Somebody showed you on their phone or something? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. They had some pretty good, like, security footage. It was weird. It was like really a, weird. Like a ring camera or something? Or? No, it was like a, just a security footage they had. Closed uh, circuit? Over a park, like a park area, yeah. When you say stick guy, stick figure stick guy. What, what? Ohio stick. I, don't um, know I mean, one. so it's been popping up in Ohio a lot. It's like literally the hide behind is the out west version. But it's literally like a almost a it's almost like a two D long lanky creature, and like everything is super like super like you took a stick man like a when you draw one as a kid yeah stretch it out to very terrifying proportions, 
But the hide behind out west is a stick man that hides behind stick. You know, as you as it's it's following you, it's hunting you, it's hiding behind like a mimic right. the shape. I mean, if it's two dimensional, it can hide behind. And it's not quite two dimensional, but it's that that's the best way I can describe yeah. it. Is it almost being like flat and very How hard shape? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The video is pretty pretty awesome. Orbs oh. and Ada. What do we know about Orbs and Ada? Orbs in Ada. Don't put me on the spot if you don't know what that actually means. Do I don't people, know what that means. Goose girl, that's Canadian super smokes. weird. Yeah, man, I've got goosebumps right now just thinking about all this crazy stuff. Little stick man running around. Yeah. The hide behind's been reported for like 190 he, years. He said Slender Man, but not quite like Slender Man. It's very, it's, no, it's, it's very different. It's very different, yeah. It's a, but we like, have other reports of it hiding like a group. Like, I just don't want to share too much. Don't share too no, much. No, no, I mean. But I like sharing. Let's don't, talk don't, about whatever whatever yeah. you guys want to talk about. We don't I do talk like about uh, it. Uh, what, what Anything. Flux, we, flux, we can start wrapping this up if you guys want. Capacitor don't matter said, us. We're not going anywhere. How does Bigfoot feel yeah, about the Canadian smoke screen? got more alcohol, screen? right? <laughs> what did he say? I don't even want to know about what that stuff is. Oh, how does is. Bigfoot feel about the Canadian, Canadian smoke, smoke screen? screen? Bro. That's not smoke. Something's That's weird. down here in town. I don't know what that is, but I saw posts on Twitter. People were measuring it and like saying the readings coming back was like, it was like... Like uh, VOCs, VOCs. It is not volatile organic compounds. Right. Oh, VOCs. It is not volatile. Right. But that's what we're being told it is. But when you measure it, it's mm-hmm. like chemicals, like benzene no. and whatever. Who else. said it was volatile organic compounds? Uh, I think the the Canadian government or I. Somebody may have misquoted that. I worked with volatile. I I worked with VOCs. Let me see if I can find. Uh, it. Hmm. No, if it was VOCs, if anybody said it was VOCs, we'd all be dead. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It. It didn't jive. It didn't make sense. Well, yeah, but I just, I don't know. organic compounds smoke. are what we test. Like, that was one of our sediment water testing stuff. Yeah. Uh, when you detect VOCs, everything's already dead. Mm-hmm. Like, the VOCs in tiny amounts of the sediment will kill. By the everything. way, for those that you might not know, Ohio is completely engulfed in smoke from the Canadian wildfires. A lot of duck Columbus, around it's here. Not a lot of duck murder. Duck like, butter. Oh, duck butter. I Lots thought you said of, duck murder. I'm like, no. who's out killing all What's these duck ducks? Because <laughs> of smoke. <laughs> What's, What's duck butter? Yeah. Oh, boy, let's not get You want to go that. there? No, no, I'm not. Okay, no. we'll, we'll give you the Off full. Yeah. 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 Oh, but that, so the hide butter. Formaldehyde and benzene is what they're actually measuring in the smoke. Okay. Wow. That's, so what does that mean? Wonderful. Is it some kind of wreck or something? Some train wreck? Formaldehyde's weird. That's on fire. So. I would been out there shooting all day in this, are they and I worked it? yesterday. It doesn't matter. They, it's in here too. You just can't see it. Right, right, right. It doesn't right. matter where you're at. I mean, as long yeah. as you're not in a vacuum room, it's hard telling. I don't know, man. Like you can't. I mean, you can't get away from this. Like whether you're in a building or not, it does no. not matter. Right. It's, it, it's in this here. stuff. Yeah. Let's just see I'm what happens. Just, to all the crops. you just can't see it in here because it's not thick enough. Well, I know, but it doesn't move. Like it doesn't matter if wind comes through. It doesn't blow it out of here. It's been sitting here for like two days. Yeah, it's weird. It's Three days. This is the third day. Third day? For sure, yeah. Nuts. I mean, when you guys Tuesday, will see later. We recorded on Tuesday. And it was bad. What, was what you guys will see later, we'll show you the drone footage we have. But over, you know, the, oh. the dam that we're shooting at today, just in the distance, I had to put an ND filter on. It was, it's like being in a big soft box. Yeah. Like a mm-hmm. light with a big soft that disperses the light. So it's it's so hard to expose. But everything just kept blowing out, and then I'd reduce it down. We'd drop down in the trees, come back up. Yeah. It was. I it, didn't like being outside today. Just well, the sun it. was completely blocked no. out. Mm-hmm. I know, but it just hurt my head more sitting outside. Oh, like Atlas last night. That's my baby. Yeah. He was sneezing out of nowhere. It was actually like freaking us out because he wouldn't stop sneezing. Yeah. But then I started sneezing. So I don't know. I don't know if it's anything to do with it. It just. Yeah. I was going to say you should write a children's book called Atlas Pooped. Oh, we had a problem where he wouldn't poop. Like Atlas yeah, Shrugged, that but you could make a nice little, Their like, you know, children's version of, yet. like, the Ayn Rand series. And then when like he pooped, Atlas, it was scary. Atlas poop. <laughs> it's coming out of all like, sides you know, of that diaper. Oh, yeah. I see where you're going. Like, oh, kids yeah. I think yeah. that'd be hilarious, like... Jelly... F- everybody poops, including jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I could do it. I know you could. <laughs> I know you could. You, Dude, I think that would be a great choice. The mighty mantis shrimp poops. Hey, I'll back that. I would invest in that. <laughs> I like Kickstarter. <laughs> Everything poops, <laughs> including oh, jellyfish. Uh, what do you think, Jay? Anything else you want to add in, guys? What do you? Is you got anything else cooking? You want to leave us with some last words? I mean, we can wrap this up. I mean, the documentary series that we're working on pretty hard right now is please our, subscribe to our YouTube. Our biggest thing, yep. Um, and that'll be coming Crips up on, on our YouTube, our Encrypts of the Corn YouTube page. 
uh, and then ne uh, not near future, but it'll be out hopefully before this. Well, we have a couple speaking events too. Year ends, yes, and then we got nice. speaking events in uh, Hocking Hills, the Hocking Hills Bigfoot Conference, which is the look on our Facebook page. Yeah, it's uh, all on our Facebook yeah. page. Yeah, okay, or on our find website. Everything there, we got links in the descriptions, everybody. Yeah, yeah, and then totally. uh, Squonkapalooza. Squonkapalooza. That's speakers. the last weekend in August. That's cool. Yep, and it's their first time putting that. It's a first but annual. It's, it's some really cool. It's cryptid theology. It's putting it on. Yeah, yeah, theology, yeah. 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 And then uh, yeah. cryptid crate. Well, cool. Yeah, I know cryptid comforts, great. you know. Yeah. And all, yeah. Cryptid you know. comforts. Those great. are the two people putting it on. Is that what it is now? Cool. It's cryptid comforts instead of cryptid crate. They, she's she's always been cryptid comforts. But she does Cryptic Crate too. Okay. Uh -huh. More people probably know her for Cryptic Crate. I've heard crate. that through Monsters Among Us before. Yeah. 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 Okay. Definitely. That's I always Lisa, thought that was cool. Yeah. Lisa. Yeah. I might Lisa need to Joe. sign up for that. My wife might kill me if I do that, but <laughs> I get a new Cryptic Crate every month. And then, if everybody on here, I'm going to I'm gonna hijack your people for a do minute. Do it. Go on to uh, Crypticon's current, like it was today's Facebook post. It says, who do you want to hear at Crypticon this year? There's already some votes for Cryptos of the Corn podcast, but please oh, go yeah. on there and do that. Oh, absolutely. We're, cool. like, I think we're only like third most requested out of like a hundred something comments. Cool, you guys man. become speakers there. I'm going. There we go. Absolutely. Josh Gates is currently beating us. What? But we're a little more available. Josh Gates is <laughs> pretty awesome. I, I like Josh Gates. I like Josh Gates a lot. His shows were, I grew up his shows were kind his of shows. Goo goofy growing up, but yeah, they were, we loved it. It's like Mountain fun. Monsters. We love those okay. guys. Okay. And he does crypt Not that of, far. Like He's not as crazy as those guys are. Yeah. Getting abducted by no, 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 no fingers. No. He's more... <laughs> Salad fingers. He's pretty Oh, there. Research, Thank you, Emily. Uh, so, ah. me, August 4th and 5th <laughs> is the 2023 Hocking Hills Bigfoot Festival in Logan, Ohio. We will be vendors at that one. <laughs> August 26th, at 10 a.m. to 5 a.m. at Squonkapalooza <laughs> in Jonestown, Pennsylvania. We will be vendors and speakers at that event. September 22nd, 23rd, the Hocking Hills Bigfoot Conference located in Big Brothers Big Sisters Camp in Otawaga in South Bloomville, Ohio. We will be vendors there and speakers there. November 18th and 19th, Squonk. 2023, CryptoCon. Squonk. Bigfoot. Awesome. That's the most... Accurate. I've ever seen you read and in my life. <laughs> it's my wife. She wrote it away. <laughs> and I think we're we're looking at Cryptid Con. I think we might be out we there might again. Do that again. I mean, you guys yeah. We get Jeff, so if drunk. you're listening, we'd love to help you with the. Well, AV. they got my boy there again. I might have to go if he shows Dude, up. This Mark week. and Jenny better be there. Politis. David Plytus is there. I'm I want to hear him speak listen, so bad. I love David David Plytus. I mean, I don't want to get a restraining but, order against me, but Plytus, I want to hear you excited. talk. But he's canceled. The last three I events know. we were supposed to see him at. Yeah, that's. What that's does he want me to do? Show up at his house? I wouldn't do that. <laughs> probably. Don't, I'm joking. You'll probably be on the missing joking, four one bub. list. I'm joking. I have that's no sense of direction. That's almost as bad of a comment as I could be the Pope. No, it's not. Because again, yeah. my laziness would not ever take me <laughs> on any kind of an excursion like I that. I think that's what his missing four one is actually about. People that go looking for him. <laughs> the, the burn reverse, the reverse 411 heck yeah anybody shows up on his doorstep gets added to the list that's hilarious well his new one his new missing 411 the uh ufo connection is pretty awesome i will say i don't think you, I, the I hunted think. is still my favorite the hunted's awesome the hunted don't get me wrong why i watch that every I'm Ohio. Favorite. yeah first uh the predator bigfoot i watch that every UFO so often sighting. bruce yeah. maccabee yeah i watch that probably every couple of months just because i love the storytelling still I love that first story too. The you guy know. in the chair in the driveway giving the interview just has the beer can. I don't even know yeah. what kind of beer brand he's drinking, but this guy is Probably just some Schlitz. Local. As, it's just local stuff. Or some hams. Cat pee in a can. But they're Disney. so good at their storytelling. Like they're Basic hunters hams. are different. Hunters are different because professional they, storytellers. <clears throat> that, but they they you're in the woods. You have to have all this memory of mm -hmm. like, okay, I saw that, and then this deer went up that way, and it, whatever. That's all we like, used to do at deer camps. When we come back, is you tell every little thing. That happened that day. Because you're by yourself. Yeah. You're just recounting, you know, what you had occurred. Or you're drunk and asleep. <laughs> Don't know anybody that did that. I've never killed a deer in my life. <laughs> well, that's why I always think they have crazy encounters too. They spend a lot of times out in the a lot of time out in the woods by themselves. And that that whole scenario of just like people going missing is just yeah, that gave me the heebie-jeebies quite a bit. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna show up at your house, David Blighters. I don't know where you live, but if you're at Cryptid Con, I'd like 413 to say four one three Oak Bird Lane. What's that? His address. Are you kidding me? Oh, Jesus. Like I know anything. <laughs> I don't know my address. 
Oh you had it God. written down in your notes. Anyways, oh, the Bigfoot no. breast, <laughs> breast <laughs> bread hunter. That was one of the filter things where I was like, don't we, remember this brand. Have, <laughs> so I seen somebody said merch. We have our merch page running. They do have merch. I yes, think next week the Tundra, the Tropics to the Tundra t-shirt should be ready. Cool. That's the first oh. time we've ever announced that publicly. Nice. That is awesome. true. Nice. So well, there you go. I look forward to seeing that. I'll show you guys the art off, off camera. Nice. Sweet. Cool. Anything else? Nope. I'm going to still be sitting here for probably another hour and a half. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, for sure. <laughs> we'll be hanging out. Uh, guys, this was awesome. Thank you for coming this down to the studio. It's great blast. hanging out today. Thanks for having us. Down Thank by you the Big for, Walnut. You guys did so much for us today. Thank you. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, you got some of the coolest footage. We probably got the whole documentary. <laughs> Well, I'm glad. I'm glad to help out. Like, honestly, if you guys are, we'll travel, too, to come help. If we don't have anything going on, we'll come out. We'll buy the pizza. Yes. Hey, we're there. Absolutely. <laughs> we're there. Absolutely. And uh, that was amazing. I'm good. Yeah, we're we'll wrapping up. Cup's full. Bub's cup, cup is full. full. Cup is full. Um, you know, you guys can find us at The Strange Road. We're on TikTok, Instagram. Uh, nice what did I miss? Twitter. podcast studio we've uh, ever been in. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate Thank you that. guys. It means a lot. Stoner it. Yeah. and Disbro and Master Thank you to Control. Stoner and Disbro and Master Control. I As tried to get Disbro earlier. Uh, <laughs> Thank you to our viewers and all the interaction, all there the they chats. Are. Yeah. What's up, fellas? There it is. What's up, fellas? Successful launch. We landed on Absolutely. the moon. Absolutely. And guys, go follow <laughs> Necro Mechanimal on Instagram. Yep. Worth a follow. He does so many awesome shows. Does some cool does artwork. Great artwork for all kinds of uh, creators. Go check out Bert and Moran's Local Legends on YouTube and his podcast. Uh, any of the other creators in the chat. Big shout out to you guys, everybody in the chat. Thank you so much. Hit for up their supporting. YouTube page. Subscribe Hit these to guys Cryptids up. of the Corn. All the links are Show in the descriptions love. for Cryptids of the Corn. And uh, we appreciate the hell out of all you guys. Peace, love, chicken grease. We're out. Till next time. It was duck grease. Peace. Duck butter grease. Duck butter. Duck butter. Oh. Peace, love, and duck butter. We'll talk about duck butter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are we, I hope we're oh all God. fair yet. Are we all fair? I got a pizza. Never know at this point. Get going. Get going, Danny. Like, all right.